Are you still on the bowl? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that. Hey, good evening and welcome to the April 13th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Go ahead and call the meeting to order at 6 p.m. Um, staff, could could we do roll call? Uh, Commissioner Childs? Present. Eldwell? Present. Roberts? Present. And Commissioners Freeman and Swain were unable to attend and have been excused. We do have a quorum. Before we begin some of these action items on the agenda, I would like to... Um, Note that we are going to postpone agenda item number three, CUP 22-20 cat rental store. Two of the commissioners have conflicts of interest, and we will postpone that until May 20th when we have more commissioners. No, May 11th. May 11th. 11? Yes, May 11th. Sorry, May 11th. Um, we will postpone that extension request. So now we can move on to the minutes from the March 9th and the March 16th meetings. Does anyone have any changes or edits? If not, we'll entertain a motion. I would motion that we accept the meeting minutes from March 9th and March 16th. Second the motion. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Minutes are approved. We'll move forward with old business, um, CUP 22-30 Shaw Family Ranch Subdivision Final Plat. This is not a public hearing. Before, um, ha has there been any ex parte contact or does anyone have a conflict of interest? No. 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 Okay, at this time we'll go ahead and hear the staff report. Okay, the staff report for CUP 22-30 Shaw Family Ranch Final Plat. The applicant is the Shaw Family Company, LLC. They're represented by James Front Consulting. It's um, property located at 326 Boulder Lake Road in sections 24 and 25 of Township 18 North Range 3 East and sections 19 and 30 in Township 18 North Range 4 East of the Boise Meridian <coughs> Valley County, Idaho. And it's 722.08 acres. The Shaw Family Company, LLC is requesting a final plat approval. The commission should review the plat to determine conformance with the preliminary plat, approved densities, and conditional use permit. Uh, the CUP and preliminary plat were effective September 20th of 2022, and this is the settlement of the Shaw family estate. The wetlands have been shown as no build zones. There are actually just six single family residential lots that range in size from 9.46 to 510 acres each. Individual wells and individual septic systems are proposed. Access is um, from Boulder Lake Road, which is a public road, and it's shown up on your screen. Right of way for Boulder Lake Road will be dedicated as part of the plat, if it hasn't already been done. I believe all of the right of way along Boulder Lake is there. So the uh, Complete final plat package was submitted February 9th. Legal notice was in the Star News on March 23rd, March 20, March 30th of 2023. The final plat was posted on the Valley County website on March 14th, and this is not a public hearing. Agency comments received. Garrett DeYoung, McCall Fire Chief, does not have any comments regarding this final plat. Kathy Riffey, Valley County Cadastral Specialist, reviewed the plat and listed corrections that need to be made. Additionally, it appears uh, one of the parcels would be split by the new subdivision's legal description, resulting in a very small portion left over outside of the southwest corner of the subdivision. And we'll need to take a look at that. It might need to be included in this. Uh, staff questions, comments, and recommendations. A note should be added to the plat referencing the Wildland Urban Interface Fire Protection Plan. The right of way east of Morale Road will need to be deeded or dedicated on the plat. Um, that acreage can be ne negotiated with the road development agreement. A note has been added to the plat stating that all structures have to be located two feet above the base flood elevation. See memorandum proposed by Forest Green Associates, Inc. dated October 12, 2022 to establish base flood elevations for Lake Fork Creek 
if you remember, there was a, a small portion of floodplain in the very northern portion of this property. Um, I do recommend it state the memorandum can be found in the Valley County Planning and Zoning Office, and then we'll keep it on file. The following are the conditions of approval and comments as to whether the applicant has complied with each condition. Page three of four under references needs change to state, say Lake Fork Estates. A signature line for the certificate of owners needs to be added, clarifying that this plot is being recorded with sanitary restrictions in place, which is something we typically don't do, but since this is the settlement of the estate and they really don't have building plans, what they'll have to do is, um, you know, like on the 500 acre parcel, get those sanitary restrictions released by Central District Health and then get a septic permit, permit approved. Um, a note needs to be added that says lots shall not be reduced in size without prior approval from the health authority and Valley County planning and zoning through a planning process. Corrections noted by the Valley County cadastral specialist need to be completed. What is the intention for the small leftover piece that the cadastral specialist mentioned? Um, conditions of approval, one through four, um, are fine. Five, declaration of installation of utilities needs to be added describing, you know, the utilities. Um, letter of approval from the McCall Fire District. They've replied to the applicant with no comment because the same land use stays in place. They're not changing any land uses. Uh, number nine, a fire mitigation plan is required and the plan has been submitted and will be recorded with the final plat. A note should, should be added to the face of the plat referring to the plan. Um, the existing structure does have a posted address. And that's this piece here. They're gonna keep the current fencing and then they'll work out a road development agreement with the Board of County Commissioners and the Valley County Road Superintendent. And then they need to add the notes stated in condition of approval number 13. And then that, that is shown here. You can see that there's some smaller pieces, the wetlands. This is the floodplain up in the corner. This is Boulder Lake Road as it travels through. And then we'll get the notes fixed and things before it goes on to the county commissioners. Cindy, could you point out the spot where the cadastralists had the concern? Is that the southeast? Southwest corner. I don't know that I can do that because the plat is not overlaid on the aerial. All right. And what she's looking at is the difference between the certificate of owners on the left and what is pictured in the plat. Yeah. Okay. Or the, the ownership deed. That ends my staff report. Thank you. Are there any other questions for staff? No. No. Okay. Thoughts? We not, are we not hearing a presentation from these guys? Oh, yes, we do hear from the applicant. Sorry about oh, that. I'm sorry. There was a letter from the Valley County mm. engineer, uh, Exhibit 1, and they say site grading and drainage plans were not required for this application. However, the applicant is required to retain stormwater resulting for, from any site improvements. And it needs to protect adjacent properties, waterways, roadway ditches from soil erosion and sedimentation using the appropriate BMPs. Okay. Now we'll hear from the applicant. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. 
My name is James Frank, 14028 Norwood Road. Oh. Much to say. Um, all of the issues in the staff report we agree with. Pedestrian the corner there uh, has been and done, as we spoke about it. That corner there is a little confusing because of the road right away and the subdivision that's old, so just needs to clean that up to make it close. So I think that's, that's the issue. It crossed over something he didn't. That will be corrected before the point. Not I add to that unless you have questions. Any other questions for the applicant? No, I think so. Okay, thank you. Now we'll move on to the deliberation. Well, Madam Chairman, I think the this for final plat, um, if they address the recommendations of staff and the conditions of approval that have been listed um, those things will have to be corrected and finished before it goes to final plat before the board of county commissioners um sended that uh, cadastral note should that be added as well or is that something that's required to be taken care of we'll take care of it okay yeah absolutely so i i don't see any problem i agree We've already had the uh, hearing on it. Madam Chairman, based on the previous hearing we had several months ago on this topic and on the uh, corrections that will be made, I would uh, move the conditional use permit 22-30, the Shaw Family Ranch subdivision final plat, uh, be recommended for approval to the Board of County Commissioners and authorize the chairman to sign the final plat. I'll second. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. Okay. All of those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. There is a 10 day appeal period in which anyone can appeal the decision of the commission to the Board of the County Commissioners in accordance with Title 9 5H 12 of the Valley County Code. Thank you. Yeah. See you Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Okay, we will move forward with new business. CUP. 09-01 Blackhawk Lake Estates phases three and four extension request. At this time, I will go ahead and open the public hearing. Has there been any an, any ex parte contact or does anyone have a conflict of interest? No. 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 Okay. We'll go ahead and hear the staff report, please. The staff report for CUP 09-01 Black Hawk Lake Estates Phase 3 and 4. The applicant is Liang Wu. The surveyor is Joe Pockner. The property plus is rural parcel 17N02 East, Section 2, 2485 plus common area within Black Hawk Lake Phase 2, located on the west side of Black Hawk Lake in the north half of Section 2. Township 17 North, Range 2 East of the Boise Meridian Valley County, Idaho. It's approximately 26 acres, and it is, they're asking for a two-year extension. And this is for, I believe, nine lots. Um, access would be from Blackhawk Lake Drive. Everybody knows where Blackhawk is here. I believe... This is the property down here. Right here. Right there. Um, the original approval was to establish a single family subdivision that will contain nine residential lots, one common lot, and three open space parcels. Individual wells and septic systems are proposed. There will be a common drain field. It will contain an internal private road, which is a continuation of the existing road. 2023 extension request. Since the 2021 extension, the civil construction plans and final plat have been completed. The wildfire mitigation plan is in compliance and current. They will continue to work with the homeowners association. The applicant anticipates completing the platting process and site improvements by the summer of 2023. The 2021 extension request is listed for your review, as well as the 2019, the 2017, the 2015, 
the 2013 and the 2011 requests. The extension requests was submitted on February 7th, 2023. Legal notice was posted in the Star News on March 23rd and March 30th. Potentially affected agencies were notified on March 14th. Property owners within 300 feet of the property line were notified by fact sheet sent on March 20th. The notice and application were posted on the Valley County website on March 14th, and the site was posted March 29th. Agency comments received. Central District Health has no objection to the extension. Public comments received none. Other agency comments, none. Staff comments or questions? The site is within the McCall Fire District. It's not within an irrigation district nor a herd district. We've listed our typical notes that are required. Um, have all improvements been made, such as construction of the road? If not, when will it be constructed? In 2021, the applicant stated they were working with DEQ to further evaluate the options for sewer septic systems. Has this been completed? A submit letter of approval to use the existing Blackhawk Lake Drive and describe how it is a continuation from phase two. CC NAR should address exterior lighting, wildfire prevention, control of noxious weeds, septic system maintenance, wetlands, the common area, posting address numbers at home and driveway, and then limit each lot to one wood burning device. A conditional use permit and preliminary plot were originally approved effective April 21st of 2009. An amended CUP was recorded on April 27, 2011, which added additional conditions of approval and modified the original condition of number five. The original condition of approval number five stated, must enter into a road development agreement with the Board of County Commissioners. It was removed when we no longer required road development agreements, but now that we require them again, I do recommend that we re-enter that condition of approval. And then, um, none of the conditions of approval have changed except that inclusion. Um, the plat is this. You can see how it matches that parcel owned. This is Blackhawk Lake. This is Blackhawk Drive as it goes through the property. And then it, it continues on. Um, April 11th, we received correspondence from Parametrics, our Valley County engineer. They state no additional review is required by the engineer. However, the applicant should review the proposed BMPs to ensure they are compliant with current BMPs. That's exhibit number one. And I have nothing to add to that. Any questions for staff? <clears throat> no. I don't think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, <clears throat> go ahead and hear from the applicant. Please state your name and address for the record. Chairman and Commissioners, my name is Joe Faulkner, 5725 Discovery Way in Boise. I'm here representing Black Hawk, uh, Black Hawk Lake phases uh, three and four. A uh, couple of things that, you know, that I think we finally got this one figured out. We, we've been, since the get go, we were trying to do one common drain fill. That lot, is this not that great of a lot for a common drain fill because of the rock? Uh, last year we went and we did exploratory holes on each of the lots with the health department. We found suitable soils on each one of them. Uh, we started the groundwater monitoring last year. Uh, we had one fail because of uh, it got, we were too close to a drainage culvert and it flooded it. So we are retesting. Uh, we did another test pit with another monitoring well for that lot. Uh, but having suitable soils on each of the lots greatly reduces the complexity of this and uh, we'll be able to get Southwest or the health department to buy off on that. The road, originally this road was going to terminate at the cul-de-sac in the southeast corner. Um, since uh, phase five has come along, uh, we've went to the homeowners association to find out if they wanted us to connect that road. About half did, half didn't. Um, we are gonna go ahead. The, 
based on the recommendation of the fire department, they want a through road. So we can build, and we're in negotiations with them right now too, because there's some road building on their side of the fence that would have to be accomplished as well. So we're, we're working with them to, uh, uh, and our plans reflect building the entire road. And that's what, what we intend on doing on this. Um, other than that, um, I think, oh, in the, the current road right now, um, since the beginning of this, they had graveled it, they had brought in, they had actually brought in joint trench. And so we, we've reached out to them once again to uh, verify their lines, their conduits, uh, which ones will have to be replaced. We want to get that done before we, it, it, just in case we do have to cut through the road once again to make sure that, you know, we get that done once. Um, but we're on board with that. Um, that's all, unless you have questions for me. Mm -hmm. Chairman, I have two questions, Joe. Um, one is the acceptance of a uh, requirement to uh, enter into a road development agreement with the county commissioners. Is that? Yes, we, I've already reached out to uh, uh, Jeff McFadden. Um, one of the things that I was kind of concerned about with, with only nine lots, what could we do? He had plenty. Um, he, on, on the road going uh, to and from Blackhawk uh, exterior, of this, he's got some big potholes that have generated up. He's going, I can find plenty of work for you to guys to you know, fulfill this. And he wants, instead of just paying into a fund, he wants us to complete the work. Um, I've talked to the developer and he's fine. Second question, dealing with the connection of the roads, uh, where there were some of the homeowners were in favor of connecting and some were not. Have you explored the idea of breakaway um, markings um, so that, you know, for emergency, they can get through them? The, the problem that we have with that is, you know, you put those breakaways in, then they have a hard time plowing the road. And then when you do have the emergency, you don't have a secondary access. Okay. And so, um, we, we had that long discussion with the homeowners and they ended up voting on it and they, they agreed that we'd just put the road through. Okay. And that's the end of the story. On that. Right. That's better anyway. Thank yeah. you. I have one question for staff. Um, a change to the septic, so was the original approval with the common drain field and would yes. that be a significant change that's gonna require or is that something that we need to address today? That is part of this public hearing okay. for the extension. They've been working on that for years. Um, that was always the holdup before. And now that they've cured that with individual septics on each lot with Central District Health last year, then I believe you could go ahead and approve this as is. Thank you. Senda, could you point me to the condition of approval that addresses the septic approvals? Is that? It's not number four. four in your question. It's number four. Number four. Okay. Oh, it's the same. All right. So the only thing I'm seeing, Madam Chairman, is the need to add the uh, language about the uh, require the road development agreement with Valley County. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So. And that's written out on page three of four. That's just the one we've been adding to all of them. Right. Prior to construction of any on-site road improvements. The bolded language. Yes. Yep. So just make that as a make condition. Number eight. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 11. Make that number 10. Okay, hold on a second. Because number 10 must spend a more specific timeline after DEQ approval is required. Will go away. Okay, got and it. And then we'll insert that. Number 11. No, she said number 10 is going to go away, so the. Oh, I'm sorry, number 5 should be the new one. Oh. And then 10 will go away. To so put the road development agreement yes. language in number 5 yes. and remove number 10. Yes. Okay, um, at this time we will open it up for public testimony. 
Is there anyone here in favor that, of this that would like to speak? Anyone uncommitted? Anyone opposed? Okay. Is there anything else that the applicant would like to? Okay. Great. Okay. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing for del for deliberations by the commission. Well, thank you, Madam Chairman. Maybe just for a little explanation to the audience of what's going on here. This is a subdivision that was previously approved years ago, and they're asking for an extension for the construction of that. So, so it makes a little more sense. What we're up to. Uh, with that, Madam Chairman, I, I think that uh, they've shown that they've uh, completed the projects, previous projects well, and, it, and uh, Everybody knows in this county, sometimes things don't happen as fast as you'd like to see them done. And with that, I would offer a motion up uh, that move. Conditional use permit 22-12, excuse me, conditional use permit 0901, Blackhawk Estate uh, phases three and four extension press be approved with the removal of uh, condition number 10 and inserting the language on condition number five to include the current language for road development agreements with Valley County. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? The only thing was staff had asked that we also remove condition number 10. I oh, you did. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I missed that. Okay, there's a motion and a second. If there's nothing else, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we will move forward to, it's not on my, mm -mm. staff, is it there a 10-day appeal period? Yes, because it's a decision. Okay. There is a 10-day appeal period in which anyone can appeal the decision of the commission to the Board of County Commissioners in accordance with Title 9-5H-12 of the Valley County Code. I missed that on your sheet. Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. You'll have to remember it all throughout the night. Yes, <laughs> I will now. Okay, now we'll go ahead and move forward to CUP 22-12 Gemma's Outdoor Market. This is a review. Um, we will go ahead and open the public hearing. Has there been any ex parte contact or conflict of interest? No. 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 Okay, we'll go ahead and hear from staff with the staff report, please. Okay, it, um, Gemma's is up on the screen here. Um, it can, encompasses both of these lots here. So Monty Moore with Ripple and Stillwater LLC. The property is addressed at 13840 and 13844 Highway 55 and is 1.5 acres. The Planning and Zoning Commission will assess impacts and compliance with the approved conditional use permit that was approved for one year on May 24th of 2022. Monty Moore, the applicant, would like to revise the site plan and hold a farmer's market weekly within the existing parking lot for Gemma's Italian Deli and Market. The 1.5 acre site is um, at, will retain the same address. There's an existing access from both Highway 55 and East Lake Fork Road. There's like two access points here and then one approved access point here. Um, currently, this site had CUP 22-12, Gemma's Outdoor Market, CUP 1603, a concessionaire trailer for drive through services, which was located in this area. CUP 12-09 was the restaurant and retail, originally called Two Sisters. Um, the request to continue CUP 22-12 with modifications was submitted on February 9, 2023, Legal notice was posted in the Star News on March 23rd and March 30th. Potentially affected agencies were notified on March 14th. Property owners within 300 feet of the property line were notified by fact sheet sent March 20th. The notice and application were posted on the Valley County website on March 14th, and the site was posted on March 29th. Agency comments received. Central District Health has no objection to the extension. Jess Ellis, Donnelly Fire Marshal said a fire apparatus roadway shall not be obstructed in, in any manner and the minimum width for traffic to flow through would be 20 feet. Public comments received none. 
listed various standards from the Valley County Codes here for your review. Refreshment. Uh, staff's compatibility remains at a positive 33, 34 because I really didn't see any changes. Um, Planning Zoning Commission shall assess impacts and compliance with the approved CUP um, that was just approved for one year. If the use is allowed to continue, an amended, an amended conditional use permit will be recorded. The site is outside of the designated floodplain. The parcel is within the Donnelly Rural Fire District and Lake Irrigation District boundaries. Is the request for an annual outside market year-round or seasonal? Landscaping plans from previous CUPs were attached. Is someone living in the motor home that's parked on site? And then please also note that the following information is needed for the approved conditional use permit. The information was not on file as of March 31st of 2023. The letter of approval from Donnelly Fire and the approval permit from ITD must be submitted to the planning and zoning. Must obtain central district health approval prior to using the RV. Must use chloride dust palliative abatement. Please let us know when this occurs. Um, and I know that they do have ITD approval because they used to enter all along here and ITD confined them to this one site. But I don't know if the ITD permit allowed them to have this outdoor facility. I'm assuming it did since the permit would have been for a commercial use. Um, but we should confirm that. Uh, and then conditions of approval, one through four are typical. Five must submit the approval letter from Central District Health. I believe the letter that says they have no objections would suffice to show compliance with that. Must comply with the requirements of the Donnelly Fire District as long as they're aware that they can't um, you know, make the roadways narrower than the 20 feet required, I think that would suffice. Um, we could check with Idaho Transportation Department or they should submit a letter from Idaho Transportation Department saying that they have approved use to expand this parking lot. Um, all lighting must comply with the Valley County Lighting Ordinance. All lights shall be fully shielded so that there is not upward or horizontal projection of lights. All existing non-compliant lighting should be brought into compliance within one year of approval of the conditional use permit. To obtain a sign permit prior to installation of any signage, hours of operation remain 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Must obtain central district health prior to using the RV as a residence. And that was an RV that had sat back here for quite some time. I must use the chloride dust palliative abatement, not any sort of oil treatment because you didn't want it running off in, into the irrigation ditch here. And the use may occur around, year around or seasonally. And in your application, you should see that there was a ch change to the site plan. Um, Are there any questions? And here's the farm, the farmer's market one. That shows the tent area back here. Mm -hmm. And then the farmer market stalls here where the previous parking was. And that would um, address Commissioner Roberts' concerns that there was danger for children and stuff maybe tipping off that, so. Okay, any other questions for staff? No. If not, we'll, we will go ahead and um, hear the presentation by the applicant. Please state your name and address for the record. I am Monty Moore. I live at uh, 13844 uh, Highway 55. Monty, would you push the microphone up, please? Thank you. Highway 55. So, um, this is a continuation of uh, 
a permit we had last year. We had a tent right next to the building. And the, <clears throat> both the vendor and I agreed that it would be better to move it back um, for many reasons. Any better traffic flow, uh, better parking, and uh, it, it didn't make the uh, building so crowded there with, with her tent. And now that she's established and people know about her, she, she was fine to move back there. So that opened up that, the side there where it's dark and down a little bit more. And so uh, the uh, permit is asking for uh, put uh, vendors there like a farmer's market. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? I do. Um, so the the uh, tent that was there before the vendor tent was kind of open all the time. Are you anticipating the farmer's market will be just open all the time, like seven days a week, just kind of like the store is, or just certain days of the week? Or? No, the, the tent was only open uh, during the daylight hours, <clears throat> and the farmer's market would be one day a week. Okay, got it. Thank you. Just for a few hours. Do, do you have an idea of how many vendors for the farmer's market? I don't. I don't have any vendors right now. Mr. Chairman, uh, Bonnie, talk to me about the RV that's there that is up against the building. Is someone living in that? That's mine. Nobody lives there. I just store it there. Oh, it's not hooked up to any type of sewer system at all? No. Okay. It's, all right. Any other questions for Monty? No. Okay. Any, anything else you'd like to add? <coughs> Excuse me. There was mention in here about the drainage. And I did all of that last year. We had the whole parking lot graded. And then a big storm drain uh, collection point installed. And then uh, I think it was an eight inch pipe because the water was eating the, the, uh, the bank away, so eroding the bank. So we put the, the uh, drainage tube in there and then naturally the water uh, zigzags down the hill, which I maintain to give it more filtration before it gets into the uh, stream. I do have one other, a couple other questions. Okay. Um, I know you've seen the staff comments and I just wondered if you could address some of the questions that Cinda had brought up in her staff report. Um, is this going to be year round or seasonal? We're all assuming it's seasonal, but landscaping was also part of the uh, questions that we had. And then on number eight, there was several, there was four items that hadn't yet been provided to the county. Could you address those issues for us? Well, the landscaping, I'm not sure what you're referring to because that bank is full of uh, weeds. And during the summer, they get this high and I mow them or maintain them to some extent. Um, what were the other four items? Um, it was information that's not yet on file. It was a letter of approval from the Donnelly Fire Department, uh, ITD, um, obtaining the Central District Health approval prior to the RV, which doesn't sound hmm. like that's gonna be a requirement now if it's not in use. Um, and then the dust chlor or the chloride dust abatement and letting the county know. Okay, I thought I ha I thought there was a letter from the fire department. That email will be fine. Okay. And then Cinda, could you address the landscaping from the previous CUP as to what you were referring to? Which one's that? That's number six on staff comments. Oh, we just attached it for your review. Oh, okay, thank you. They have all those big rocks out here yeah. and We've got quite a nice little area over here, landscaped. Yeah, th this was all put in here, this ermy area, the signage. They put the ramp in and 
flower pots and so that was landscaping on one of their prior CUPs. Yes. Not not this one. Yeah. Okay, you had a couple no, more questions? I have at least one. So uh, can you stop for a minute so we can happen with my screen? Okay, we're good. And we're back on. <laughs> Technical errors. Sorry about that. So uh, I have one question for Monty. Dealing with the runoff from the parking lot, you said it meanders down the hill and then before it hits the stream. Can you point out to me where it hits the stream? Maybe it's in the <coughs> Right there, right. That's exactly it. So that's actually an irrigation canal, right? I'm aware of that. Okay. Um, and I, is that the Mahala ditch, or it's not Mahala? It's not Lake Irrigation. Um. You know which one that is, and. My my point in asking about that is I think it would be uh, well worth uh, the effort to talk to the irrigators that irrigate down below that uh, if they have concerns about the runoff from the you know erosion and stuff getting into the canal uh, and or any contaminants. Well, it's been like this for ages, and. If anything, I've improved it. Um, maybe require some waddles or something? Well, I, I, I think there needs to be some consultation with the irrigation uh, district. With lake irrigation? I don't think it's lake irrigation. I think it's... Um, if you look up here, Commissioner, it's... Is it lake? Yeah. Okay. So that's something that the in county engineer would have looked at and had concerns about if there was, was an issue. Yeah, if we'd done any site grading or stormwater management, um, you know, for the original site grading and, and things like that, um, we, we could ask the engineer, Valley Soil Water Conservation District, or the Irrigation District. I think that would be, okay. that'd be good. If that was, we'll find out what you should do to maybe clean that water up as it flows in there. Maybe a waddle or two. Okay. 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 Any other questions? No. Uh, Commissioner Roberts? I don't think so. So your intent is not to have a year-round facility, farmer's market, like one day a week? Yeah, and it's it's just during the summertime. I mean, it's okay. way too cold and snowy to do anything else out there. And you don't have a uh, concern about con contacting ITD for the recommended approval from staff the icd itd auto transportation department i you say i don't have a concern about doing that no I, would you have a concern because that's right now that's listed as one of the recommendations for the what would i contact them about I, I can do that commissioner um i'll just contact uh wendy howell she's the new itd person and ask if the existing commercial access permit covers this use. Okay. Uh, uh, unless there's anything else, we'll go ahead and open up, open it up for public testimony. Okay. Great. Thank you, Bonnie. Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor? Is there anyone that is uncommitted? Anyone that is opposed? Is there anything else that the applicant would like to add? No? Okay, thank you very much. Then we'll go ahead and close the public hearing for, del for deliberations by the commission. I don't see an issue with um, this this review, I think he's done his due diligence and with a couple additional things added, I think it's still a good application. Yeah, I, the only thing I would suggest is that they you know, have the uh, contact made with the irrigation district about the impacts. 
Um, I agree. I'm right there with you. I have no no issues with this um, application. Um, that being the case, I'd move that we approve the 2023 review of CUP 22-12 Gemma's Outdoor Market um, with the addition of the conditions of approval that the applicant will work with Lake Fork or Lake Irrigation District and staff to ensure runoff has no contaminants impacting the irrigation water quality. And ITD. And ITD. Thank you. Second the motion. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. There is a 10-day appeal period in which anyone can appeal the decision of the commission to the Board of Valley County Commissioners in accordance with Title 9-5H-12 of the Valley County Code. Thanks, Bonnie. Okay, we... Um, as we stated at the beginning, number three, CUP 22-20 Cat Rental Store is being postponed until May 11th when we will have a quorum available. So we'll go ahead and move on to CUP 23-06 Smith Family Camping Site and multiple residences. At this time, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Has there been any ex parte contact or does anyone have a conflict of interest? No. No. Okay. We'll move forward with the staff report then, please. Mm -hmm. So this is the site here. Here's the access point. This is Kabarton Road. And... Here's the city of Cascade. You go down here and then you can travel over to the lake. That gives you an idea of where it's located. This is state land back here. This piece. And. I have met with the applicants and they have updated their site plan. So, staff report. The staff report for CUP 23-06 Smith Family Camping and Multiple Residences. The applicants, Mike and Alicia Smith, their property is addressed to 465 Cabarton Road. That is also where they live. This property is in the northwest quarter of Section 7, Township 13 North, Range 4 East of the Boise Meridian Valley County, Idaho, and the property is 4.99 acres. Mike and Alicia Smith requesting approval of a conditional use permit for a recreational vehicle park to allow nine campers, RVs, plus two tiny homes under 400 square feet to be used by family and friends. Visitors would also use tent camps throughout the properties. Um, and they've reduced that to six RV sites, no tiny homes, and any tents would, could not be seen from other properties. But I'll let them explain that. Uh, the campsite will be used for personal use and will not have any commercial or rental use. There's an individual well, septic system, and electrical power. A porta potty is proposed. Access to the home, tiny homes, and campsites would be from a driveway onto Cabarton Road, a public road. The five acres is addressed at 465 Cabarton Road. Um, RVC 2022 06 was approved at this site for a maximum of three recreational vehicles, and that was done last summer. The applicant application was submitted on February 1st, 2023. Legal notice was posted in the Star News on March 23rd and March 30th. Potentially affected agencies were notified on March 14th. The site is within the Cascade Impact Area. Therefore, the Cascade City Clerk was emailed the fact sheet and application on March 14th. Notice sheet and property owners within 300 feet of the property line were notified by fact sheet sent on March 20th. The notice and application were posted online on the Valley County website 
on March 14th and the site was actually posted March 29th of 2023. Agency comments received. Central District Health recommends denial. If the tiny homes have plumbing and will be served by water, each will require a septic tank and drain filled. If there are to be dry cabins, then that needs to be specified. Location of the porta potties were, no sh were not shown on the site plan. Disposal of the gray water needs to be addressed. The site plan indicated a roadway with parking spots. Based on their records of the septic system, it appears the roadway will go over the top of the drain field, which is, in a vi which is a violation. Steve Hull, Cascade Fire Chief, stated requirements for recreational fire pits, shared driveways, and tiny homes. Public comments received. Um, we received one uncommitted response, and they have concerns. Rodney White has concerns. Portable outhouse would be required to not overstress the existing septic system. Currently, visitors at this home drive motorcycles and other recreational vehicles on the dead end road he lives on. It would be great if they trailered and rode elsewhere. Lights and noise should cease at 10 p.m. Notice should have occurred for this proposal during the summer, as many of the surrounding families are most likely unaware of this notice. Comments in opposition and then the reasons listed in those opposition letters are as follows. It's too dense in a residential area, would negatively affect the rural nature of the neighborhood. This would equal 12 residences on five acre parcel, two persons per camper per RV and two, tiny pers two persons per tiny home means an additional 22 people. There does not seem to be a limit to the number of people at this site. At any given time, there have been over 20 people. There's no limit on the number of size of tents. These are visible from Cabarton Road. We'll use an effect on adjacent wells and aquifer. Septic system capacity is a concern. Increase in traffic on Cabarton Road leading to danger to pedestrians and cyclists and increased damage to the road itself. Increased use of UTVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles on nearby roads. Noise, including generators, light pollution, gun shooting, and party atmosphere are concerns. The use has already impacted the neighbor's use of their property. Increase in fire hazard in timbered residential area. Many available camping sites in the area, including ADA accessible sites for group outings. Trash is a concern. There's been um, at the drive entrance for at least six months. Increased likelihood of pets trespassing. This has already been an issue. Dog waste should be kept cleaned up. Impact on the adjacent state land and wildlife. There's no incentive for this project to invest in more than the barest safety standards for the family and friends with disabilities and mobility issues on a slope property with dirt surfaces. The site is not suitable for handicapped or special needs people. Could negatively, negatively impact neighboring property values. Construction on these campsites shown on the proposed map were completed in 2022. An RVC permit was approved for three RV sites in 2022. However, six campers were at the site. Safety and crime concerns for the neighborhood. A towable light tower has been used to light up the area at night. A letter states there is no distinction between the applicant's proposed project and their current business named Trinity Assisted Living. The letter suggests that the proposed site is used by clients of the business. There are concerns of this use becoming a for-profit commercial rental use. Letters were received from Tom and Michelle McGlashan, Jerry and Billy Cuter, Fred McGlashan, Ronald Melchior, Clinton Kennedy, Warren Johns, Chad and Julie Ewing, Doreen and Bruce McCoy, Clyde and Debbie Hepworth, Stacy Schimpf, an anonymous source, Del Hamilton, Leslie Hamilton, Nellie McGlashan, Julie Jones, Ronnie Rankin, Paul Wyram, Linda Jarvis, Charlie McGlashan, an anonymous source, Raphael Sidibaka, Carol Hines and David Elliott, Shane and Chris Ball and Chris Jones. Uh, the physical characteristics of the site, its variable topography um, includes slopes in excess of 15%, conifers with some open areas. Surrounding land use uh, to the north is single family residential, south is single family residential, east is agricultural grazing, and the west is just a single family residential in Idaho Department of Lands. Uh, Valley County Code um, categorizes this under two residential uses, J multiple residences on one parcel, and then four private recreation uses, campgrounds and facilities. Listed various portions of the code for your review.
maximum density for any residential use is 2.5 dwelling units per acre. Uh, staff's compatibility rating based upon the old site plan and uses was a negative three. Staff comments, the site is within the Cascade Fire District. It's not within an irrigation district nor a herd district. It is within the Cascade Impact Area. A detailed site plan showing dimensions, including setbacks from property lines is required. The applicant was sent an outline of the property. Parking and camping sites are not allowed in setback areas. The site plan should include existing and proposed storage buildings. Are setbacks currently met with the existing RVs, boats, and vehicles? Was the total number of RVs being proposed? How many tents will be allowed on the property? Will they be erected all through the summer season? The application states that one or two dry tiny homes may be added in prior to 2025. Where is your septic and drain field located? Is the driveway, RV sites, parking, and anything else placed above the septic drain field? Where will the porta potty be located? Will there be more than one? How often do you anticipate having the porta potty emptied? Where do your, your family and friends bathe? How many friends and family will be on site at one time? Have you built retaining walls? And if so, how tall are they? How will you dispose of gray water? Central District Health will have to approve the plans. What kind of fence is being proposed? The application states more landscaping will be added prior to 2027. Please be more specific. You use a commercial lighting trailer as outdoor lighting. Um, and then in 1971, an ordinance was adopted for an RV park or tra trailer court, travel trailer court. Um, but I believe that was more for commercial use, but I want to make you aware that we do have that ordinance. Recreational vehicle campground. There's a definition here. Um, parcel of land under one ownership, which has been planned and approved for the placement of two or three transient recreational vehicles for dwelling purposes, including placement on parcels where single family residential uses have been established. And that's why they were issued the RVC permit last year. Um, when the ordinance was amended in May of 2020, the matrix and private recreation use standards were not changed. The ordinance allows RVC um, campgrounds as permitted uses. It was never determined what standards would be for uses beyond the three RVs, which require the conditional use permit versus other recreation uses that, re that require the increased setbacks. Proposed conditions of approval. One, the application, the staff report, and the provisions of the land use and development ordinance are all made a part of this permit as if written in full herein. Any violation of any portion of the permit will be subject to enforcement and penalties in accordance with Title 9-2-5 and may include revocation or suspension of the conditional use permit. Any change in the nature or scope of land use activities should require an additional conditional use permit. The issuance of this permit and these conditions will not relieve the applicant from complying with applicable county, state, or federal laws or regulations or be construed as permission to operate in violation of any statute or regulations. Violation of these laws, regulations, or rules may be grounds for revocation of the conditional use permit or grounds for suspension of the conditional use permit. A maximum of two tiny homes um, shall be established or a permit extension will be required and will remove that condition of approval because they're no longer proposing those. Building permits will be re required for all structures, including homes, whole buildings, and outbuildings. Shall obtain approval from Central District Health. All lighting must comply with the Valley County Lighting Ordinance. All light shall be fully shielded so that there is not upward or horizontal projection of lights. Shall maintain septic systems and drain fields. No residences, RV sites, or campsites can be used as short-term rentals or long-term rentals unless a new conditional use permit is approved. A maximum of blank RVs may be on the property. Currently, they're proposing six. A maximum of blank tech camp sites shall, shall be on the property. They should probably give us a number on that. All noxious weeds on the property must be controlled. Campfire shall be maintained in an established fire ring. Water shovel and or fire extinguisher must be in close proximity. And I believe that they just have one fire ring on site. Snow must be stored on site. The site must be kept in a neat and orderly manner. To clearly post the physical address at the driveway entrance, shall mark all property lines. Noise shall be kept to a minimum between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. 
landscaping shall be added for a visual barrier and you should come up with a date when that landscaping could be done. Prior to construction of any on-site improvements, a site grading and stormwater management plan shall be approved. Um, a conditional use permit will expire if the property is sold. And then they may need to enter into a road development agreement. That would be a discussion with the Board of County Commissioners and the road superintendent. Um, and I'll go through the new exhibits. A letter was received from the Valley County engineer and they say site grading and drainage plans are not required for this application. However, the applicant is required to retain all stormwater resulting from site improvements on site and will protect adjacent properties, waterways, and roadway ditches from soil erosion and sedimentation using appropriate best management practices. A letter was exhibit two was submitted from Alicia and Smith, and it was kind of a back and forth email. You had it before the meeting tonight between us. I mean, and she responds to some of the neighbors in my email, and I'll let her present anything from that correspondence she wants to submit. So um, can I interrupt you for just sure. a second? Are any of these new correspondence exhibits based on the application as amended? No. Um, Central District Health responded um, yesterday and said, based on the information provided in this email from Ms. Smith, it appears that there are no septic systems proposed, nor will any of the RVs or structures seek connection to the existing septic service, septic system serving the home. Therefore, Central District Health's only requirement will be that the applicant submit an accessory use application so that they can ensure that none of the proposed RV pads or structures will impact the location of the existing septic system and they also recommend that a sufficient number of portable sanitation units be provided so that the home septic system is not overloaded. That was dated yesterday. That's exhibit three. Exhibit four um, is from Joseph Jones. His primary residence is in Meridian. He owns property in Valley County and he's a part-time resident. Um, this will turn a residential property into a recreational vehicle park and campground, and it will have many negative impacts. I really don't see, I haven't seen any impacts in here that were previously identified. And they were also concerned that um, the friends and family might include um, residents from their business. I will let them address that. Exhibit five, Robert Pritchard. They live at 234 Barton. Um, Barton Road doesn't deserve any commercial looking operation in, in a purely residential area. Um, we each have a copy of that. That's exhibit five. Exhibit six is from talks about the applicant and the ownership of the Trinity Assisted Living and disabilities. I won't read that one out loud. Exhibit seven from Sean and Mike Arnold um, was received today. They're concerned about increased ATV, UTV, uh, definition of family, dark skies, Septic parking, trash, everything that was previously listed in the, the list of concerns. And they also submitted some pictures of the site from last summer. And then exhibit eight I received today from the applicant. And I'll go through that on the screen. We also received exhibit nine this afternoon from LaDon and Dave Saxton. And they are opposed and they did not list any new um, 
concern for impacts that weren't previously listed. No water, sewer, dogs, noise, high speed recreational uses. Um, and then the applicant submitted this RV site, what they're proposing. If you look up on the screen, there's an RV site here, 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 and then they've got their personal RV trailer over here. There should be six of them. Here? Over where it's half the direction. Right down. Mm. Now go over. 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 <laughs> no, yeah, right. Right. Over right. right. Now so go down. It's kind of oh. half cut off. Over. Oh, here. Oh, okay. Oh. It got cut off. It got cut off when it was being copied. Yeah, okay. Because it, it was a bigger piece of paper, okay? Our copy machine <laughs> couldn't handle it. Um, and so to see the whole thing, it's over here. Um, and this is where they're proposed. They're going to make a parking area up here. That was cut off too, yeah. by their barn. And then they'll, they'll have four spots here, spots by their house, um, and in between these two. And they submitted some pictures. This is from their driveway. And that's the, the roof next door. You want them to present these or, I mean, you have all of these. Motorhome areas over 10 feet from the property. There's the neighbor's roof again. Um, This is the distance they say from the neighbors. There's the light pole. We're installed, installed by Idaho Power. This is a boat that they're gonna to take to the dump. It was left on the property. So oh, that ends my staff report. Okay, are there any questions for staff? So, Cinda, I'm determined I do have a question. Mm -hmm. This uh, same site was approved, and I believe I saw in the front end last year or two years ago for three RV sites. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, they had an RVC permit. Okay. And that's, I want to go back to the ordinance on. An RVC permit allows them to have three. And it specifically says two or three, right? Yes. And anything beyond that, they have to have the conditional use permit. And they cannot rent them out. It has to be for use by friends and family. Is what the ordinance says. And, and that's if they're going to leave the RVs on site. If someone's going to bring their RVs up every weekend, we have nothing against that. Right. It's just to leave them on during the season without pulling them off. Okay. And so for their RVC, they have to meet the, the lesser of the setbacks, the yes. 20 feet. If this was their, you have a copy of their original site plan that was mm -hmm. very confusing. And so they submitted this one. Do you know where the drain field is for the house? No. I can ask the applicant. Okay, you, you can present that in your presentation. Are there any other questions for staff? No. Not at this time. Okay. We'll go ahead and hear a presentation by the applicant. Please state your name and address for the record. Wait, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. 
And if both of you are going to speak, we'll need both of your names and addresses, please. Elisha Smith, 465 Cabarton Road. Mike Smith, 465 Cabarton Road. And I first off want to say whoever the balls are, I don't know if they're here, but I had no idea that you guys had property behind us. We thought it was straight next to BLM, so we didn't realize that there was a sliver of land. So um, they had mentioned that there were some hunting flags, and those honestly were just flags so we knew how to get back to our property. They're not. And so we will talk to them and talk to them afterwards and sincerely apologize. We had no idea. Um, we talked to Reggie, and he is an amazing man. And um, I, he had said that we back right up to BLM. So I didn't realize that we had somebody behind us. So we just go for walks back there. It's beautiful. Um, so, so yeah, so we'll talk to the balls, whoever those are. Um, are they here? You just make sure that you're, because you are presenting oh, to us. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Okay. That is who it is, right? That owns yeah. the property yes. behind us. Okay. <laughs> All right. And I just want everyone to know that we have heard our neighbors and what they have said, and I appreciate their feedback because my mind didn't go to half of the places that they went. Um, and we've scaled it back significantly. I misunderstood when I was doing the application. I thought that we had to put everything we could possibly ever do in 15 years. And I'm like, I have no idea. So the tiny homes was an idea instead of our children coming they're, they're We have four children, but they're all over 18. When they come up, they would just pitch a tent and then go. So I figured, you know what? If we had dry cabins that they could stay in, then it would eliminate it from there. But we can have them put the tent somewhere where it's not seen. That's our, that, I mean, we're, we're really happy to do most things as long as it makes everybody happy. And um, I want to address the fact Trinity Assisted Living. Yes, I'm a proud owner of 18 years. Um, I've opened five different facilities. I know the route to do it. I absolutely moved up here to get away from the stress of my company. It is not going to be for my residents. It is going to be for my own family. And when I say family and friends, I believe that's the name of the, um, I don't know what it's called, but that's what it's called is the family and friend campground or whatever it is, but it really is family. Um, we, have, we have two friends. One of them, uh, their family lived with us when we first moved up there until right before Christmas. And they also had four dogs. Um, they since have built their home and they're happy and healthy there and doing great. Um, but the rest of them are legitimately family. And I do have some here. Um, I do have the representatives of the three RVs that were already, already approved. So those are there. Um, and then we're just asking for the three additional. And like I said, with the tents, um, we'll try to have those pitched somewhere where they can't be seen from the road. Um, and then everybody that comes up to stay with us has their own home their own job, their own lives outside of here. It really is more safety to have them leave their RV, set it up how they want to, and then they drive their vehicles to and back and forth from Boise Meridian and Nampa. Um, we are not receiving money for it. They help around the property, they help pick up dog poop. I know that was a thing <laughs> addressed and I totally understand. Um, I want to address that right now, we don't like how it looks either. Um, I, I'm sure everybody knows when they're doing construction, it looks way worse before it looks better. And we did move up in April and we had some, we had families living with us and, and our family living with us. And so we literally, the snow just melted. So we were able to move that abominable couch. Somebody was coming to pick it up. We put it out there. It was Reggie's couch. It was not six months. Um, I actually bought, brought the couch up on January um, 12th. January 12th, and someone was going to pick up the couch on the 15th, and they just didn't, and the snow fell off. This is our first winter here, so we learned a lot, but we literally were just able to move it two days ago or yesterday. I don't remember when we did, but, and then the big pile was all rubbish from the five acres that we pulled down, set a pile. We are taking it. We were hoping we could go to the free days for the dump site, but we were past the mark on when that was. We won't wait until, I think, June until they as have soon it again. As the snow melts. Yeah, so as soon as it, we're able to get in there and get it all out, we'll take it off to the dump. So that's what that is. Um, we do have American flags out front, and those intend to stay American flags. Nothing else. That is, we we're, we're, we love where we live. Um, we do have a paved road. It's not a dirt road um, in front of our property there. 
And they also have an RV site just down the road at Trinity Pines. And, you know, just south I just want to point Trinity that out. Pines. We're not trying to change up yes. anything. So we're not trying to change it's, anything. It's a seasonal thing. I have a large family. Her dad, her aunt and uncle, she's got a small family. They have the two RVs there. And then my three brothers bring up their RVs and they leave them because they don't want to back and forth. I mean, mm -hmm. they live in Nampa and they just don't want to fight the traffic and stuff. And we have RVs that we own too. So we have our own and that is one of our things. We want to be able to get a, a shelter of some sort to be able to tuck everything out of and the way. And then the septic stuff, Ryan Redman, he comes in once a week, pumps those RVs and puts fresh water in them. Once a week, that's what he does. Well, and that's unless, what we did. Unless they unless don't we, need it. Unless yeah. they don't need it. Sometimes he was only coming once a month. And we do have a porta potty. It's been there since last summer mm. and Ryan placed it. It's actually on the, behind it's behind the garage. our garage back there. It says porta potty on the right hand side. And that has, it's in the exact same place. We only had to have it pumped or cleaned one time. And it was the end of the season before the snowfall. It's rarely used because a lot of our children just come in. I mean, we only have four kids, but they come into our house. They'll shower if they need to. Everyone else has RVs, so they have their own their, uh, gray water, black water, whatever is held inside the RV. And that's what Ryan Redmond comes in, pumps out, or whoever has the septic pumping. Um, we Last year was kind of crazy. I mean, that's an understatement. We agree. We had first moved here. It was new. We had a lot of people coming up and helping us, and people would just kind of pull in and park their stuff. Having this will be able to, you know, say, nope, you can park here, 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 or, you know, whether or not they're already full, just say, I'm sorry, you know, we don't, we don't have any open spots because we're only allowed six RVs or whatever it is, but they'll be designated spots, just like the two. So the two that are right across from our house, that's my, um, aunt and uncle. Okay. So the two at the house is the aunt and uncle. And then the other third one we have is my brother's. Oh, but then, we yeah. actually own two of the RVs. Two of the RVs that are there, they're not even lived in. They're just parked. We own those. And really, all together, I think we were doing the math, and people were actually there for a total of three weeks all together throughout the summer. Often, they are gone. The RVs are there. They're just sitting there. We maintain it. We, you know, we literally just keep the property looking as nice as we can. That's the other help from them. The family hauls out the garbage whenever they come. They throw it in the back of their truck or whatever it is. They haul it off. We just have garbage cans, and we use regular garbage cans. And also the partying thing. I mean, this whole thing has got out of control. It's misconcepted everything. The party, we invited our neighbors to. It was for uh, Tom and Pat's 50th anniversary, and Denny Manziel and Kathy Manziel, they're all family. It was for their 50th anniversary, and it wasn't even loud or bad or anything. So... I don't know where this loudness and all these fires are coming from. We have one fire pit. The only thing I can think of is like the RVs and the driveway. We have solar lights in there and they have the, the like the, the flicker. flickering burning lights. So it looks like they're tiki things. But, but they're low to the ground. It's solar so powered. I, I don't so know if that's what I don't know what or, the whole fire thing is about. I don't know. So we just have one fire pit. I had drawn one down at the bottom as just an option. Again, on the first map that I sent, it was a lot of it was just like, hey, we're really open to whatever will work. But um, so that we just have that one fire pit that was there to begin with. And then the boat that was left on there that is down below, we are trying to, I mean, make it a project, I guess, because it was just left there. And Reggie said that there was a Idaho fishing game gentleman that left it there years prior to him and he was gonna come back and pick it up and he never did. So that literally all that crap that's down there was there. We didn't bring it up from Boise to be able to throw it away. And then business-wise, I want to address that. Um, as of hopefully the end of this month, I will only be 5% ownership of the business. Again, I moved up here to get away from the stress. My we moved up here to basically retire. <laughs> yeah. My, and, and to be with our families because they helped us get to where we are today. And um, right. so I'm a licensed professional. So I have a licensing agency that if anyone ever has a concern that I have my clients up at, the, at my property or anything like that, they're welcome to call me in and say, hey, you know, I'm putting them in dangerous positions or whatever. It's literally my family. And I mean, my sweet aunt Pat took a header right out front of the building because he tripped, she tripped on the sidewalk out front of the courthouse. It happens. And so I didn't want anybody thinking just because my own family uses assistive devices that it's my residence. It is not. My property is not safe enough for my residents and my liability insurance for all of my clients and my staff do not cover my personal property. Whenever we take them fishing, we take them camping, 
We take them off. We rent an RV park so that I have proof to show anybody that yes, we rent rent it out. We do CJ Strike. We've done up we've done up here. We've done everywhere, at in Cascade, Idaho. CJ Strike. I can't remember where else we've gone. And same thing with fishing so as well. Um, horses. I saw some comments in there yeah, about our horses for our residents. We don't have horses. We do absolutely take horses down to the facilities. If anybody saw them on my website, you can see that they're in the backyard of my facilities. My neighbors love it. I don't know. But yeah, they, when it comes down to it, the facilities has nothing to do with They have nothing to do with this. And, and I. One other thing I want to address is they're saying we're the ones speeding up and down the roads. Yes, we have side by sides. Yes, I have an 18 year old son, but I put that to bed on the speeding stuff. But I could sit out front, I could count 50 side-by-sides, motorcycles, everything. Everybody uses Kabarton over to get to West Mountain. It's it's not us. I mean, there's a bunch of hate over here, and we're trying to end it. And, you know, we're just, you know, it's just, yeah. And I can assure everybody that, obviously, reading all of the comments, all the love letters that we got, um, we're very conscientious about it. And so, you know, going forward, of course, we'll be more conscientious, but it's not just us. We often hear, um, I have text messages to Michelle, my neighbor saying, hey, I'm sorry, I don't know if you heard the noise last night, but it was not us. We, I don't know who lives on the, the other side of us. I don't know what side that is, but the far side. I don't know who, who is over Maybe there. behind the shop. But it is, I mean... It, it's not us, but we hear it and we, we don't care. We're sitting around the fire. So it's not a big deal to us, but I wanted, you know, the neighbors to realize that I'm being very conscientious about the noise and that it, it wasn't us. And so I was apologizing, saying, I'm so sorry if you heard that it wasn't us because I wanted to make sure. And, and she had mentioned that she didn't hear it, but we sure did. So, and I'm not saying we've never been loud, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying we'll be far more conscientious about the time cutoffs at 10 PM. And the majority of the people that come to my prop my property, are well over the age of retirement age. And so, then, but we have kids, and we'll keep an eye on them, of course. Septic in the drain fields, if you go to the south side of the house, yep. okay, so right up against the house, maybe 10 feet off right yep. there, is where our tank is, mm -hmm. and the two leach fields, it goes probably 10 feet, and then they kick out, and the two leach fields go in that grassy area Correct. up there, which nothing is there at all. And we're willing to put a fence up if that would make people... Um, feel more comfortable with it. We don't. We think it would look less wildernessy with a fence. But like I said, we're willing to do, you know, what we can afford to be able to do and be able to look make it look nice. And that's our goal. Is this summer? I mean, obviously it's getting warm right now. My husband owned a landscaping business. He's selling it. Did not sell all of his machines. So we ourselves have a number of vehicles and small machines that we own and we're going to park them up on the hill where you won't even see it. I didn't even know that there was a barn up there. So um, as far as I know, you cannot see it from the street. So yeah, it's right there. So clearing off either to the right of it or the left of it or anywhere right over there. Around yeah, it. we can clear off and make parking so that parking is up there and not down on the bottom. We don't want it to look white trash either. Like, yeah, I seriously. Mean, we do. We own eight four wheelers, two side by sides, four boats, and they're all ours. They're no one else's, but Last year, we ran out of time of doing a parking area. I mean, we just started, and we ran out. Winter came, and, you know, everything's where it's at. And I tried to, like, I took the boat down to, what's the? I don't know their name. The boat place. That anyway. does the repairs and what happened <laughs> And I here. stored the boat down there. <laughs> yeah. So for, that's, that's uh, the boat that time. we own is down there. It's being stored somewhere. The one that is left on the property was abandoned there before us, and we are either going to move it to a place where you can't see it to work on it and fix it up, or we will be taking it to the dump. That's all I have, unless there's questions. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of questions, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I'll address the lights. Oh, yeah. At Old Power came in, they set a pole, and they put the light on their pole. When we pulled a permit on our pole, when we did our pole injunction, it was code. We had to put a light, and we had to put a... Uh, Outlet plug outlet. to be able to pass. Um, my brother's an electrician. He's the one that helped me put in the poles and yeah. stuff. But we had to do that to pass it. I can shut the one light off, but mm -hmm. I know power controls the other light. But yeah. they don't. I, I know the neighbors are saying it's flashing over there. And I didn't want to disrespect anybody and go and take pictures of their property and walk on their property like people have on ours. 
but you can go over there and look in their front yard at night when it's midnight and there's no light going intruding on their property at all. It does face down. I mean, it's the one that Idaho Power did and I don't know if they have any type of shield that can we can put on there. Like I said, we're happy to do whatever. The one that we pay for every month and we, we get charged for every month on the top of our pole, we have a light switch so we can turn it off. And it's, I mean, that's no problem at all either there, that way either. But it's just a little bit safer on our property when you can actually see what's going on. So, <clears throat> okay, I think we'll go ahead and move forward with questions for the applicant. Yeah, I actually don't have any. Good. I'm good too. Okay. I don't think I have any. So now we will um, go ahead and move forward with public testimony. You, you will have a chance uh, to come back and, after the public testimony. Thank so you. thank you. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go ahead and open it up for uh, public testimony. I know there's quite a few people here tonight who probably want to speak, so we are going to keep it pretty strict to the three minutes. And I would just mention that if you um, agree with what someone else has said, maybe just say, I, I agree, and then bring up any new info rather than just repeating some of the same concerns over and over. Um, Cinda has the timer. You'll hear the beeper at the end of three minutes, so please try to wrap it up once you hear that. And we'll move forward with testimony of proponents. Anyone in favor that would like to speak? Okay, please state your name and address for the record. My name is Jared Smith. I live at 2859 North Earth in Meridian, Idaho. One of those camper trailers are mine up there in the right. My family, we got, I got six other brothers and sisters and we all like to hang out. My dad died two years ago and uh, got together on this place and it's just kind of a nice outing for the family. It's mostly family. Um, yeah, I leave my trailer up here so I don't have to bring it over the hill all the time. In fact, my truck just got totaled. So now I'm gonna have to ask to leave it up here for the summer because I don't have anything to pull it with. So yeah, I mean, we come up here on the weekends me and my wife, sometimes my kids come, they'll pitch a tent. You know, I mean, it's just a great place for the family to gather. Um, figured we were in the mountains and nobody cared about other people's business. But anyway, thank you. Okay, thank you. Please, please state your name and address for the record. I am Tom Cole. I live in Nampa, 1710 South Florence Street. I've been a resident of Idaho. My grandfather was a resident of Idaho. And so therefore, I know what Idaho is supposed to be. And believe me, it hurt my heart when we read the things about people who object to the American sir, flag. Sir, you are uh, addressing the... I'm sorry, I'm emotional. The, that's, I that's have fine. my family died to protect their right to object to our flag. Now, that said, we got all kinds of complaints about our 50th wedding anniversary. My cousin Kathy and I married the same summer a week apart. And we're still alive, so we celebrated. It's pretty darn neat to be married for 50 years. And that's only because my wife has the biggest forgiveness gene in the, in the world. I'm not that good. My other thing is, if they're worried about traffic, I also have camped and had worked at the Nazarene Church Camp. They're expanding that because we have more and more people that are going there. So if they're worried about campgrounds, that's going to happen. So... There you go. I just am very disappointed to in the people that wrote those letters. They're obviously not from Idaho because Idahoans don't act like that. They welcome people into the community instead of stabbing them in the back. I'm sorry I'm a little emotional, but I'm sick and tired of being screwed over by those people who come into Idaho and then try to mess it up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak in favor? Oh, 
Please, please state your name and address for the record. My name is Patricia Cole. My address is 1710 North Florence um, in Nampa. I happen to be the wife of that one that just spoke <laughs> with the forgiveness gene. And when he said that, I, it always makes me laugh. But the truth is, this is going to be about forgiveness. But my reason for being here is that, like he said, and literally our entire 50 years of marriage, we have camped by ourselves before our kids came along, with the kids, and we have spent many, many summers here in Cascade because we love it here. For about the last five years or so, we stayed in Pines RV as the, the full summer group. We considered ourselves residents because we put not only our money into keeping things going, but it saved gas for us a whole lot. We have a Class A motorhome. It's our, literally our second home. And yeah, it takes a lot of gas to come from down there to up here, just to move it from place to place. So when we came up here and were told that Pines RV was closing, or we could pay somewhere between ten and twelve hundred dollars a month, which was right at twice what we had been paying. And I, I know it's an old cliche to hear someone say, I live on a fixed income. Yeah, we are retired. We are retired teachers. And I have also retired from working in a hospital for 20 years. So we've earned it. We did our dues. We've been part of our community in Nampa, just like Mike and Alicia want to be part of this community. They have a lot to offer. For me, this was my safe haven. Um, when, because at first, Mike and Alicia also stayed in, in Pines RV with us. Well, not with us, but next to us in the park. That's the first time we got to be together as a family with their family. Mike's family came and went now and then. Alicia's family, part of those being us, we were there all summer and really got to get to know each other extremely well as adults and get to know their kids. They have good kids. They're kids. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm John Cole. I live at 614 East Idaho in Meridian. Uh, I have been a native of the state of Idaho, born and raised in, in Caldwell, moved to currently living in Meridian. I have camped and traveled all over the state of Idaho. And I was absolutely elated when I heard that Elisha and Mike, my daughter and son-in-law, were buying a piece of property up here. And I said, yes, I can move my motorhome up here for the summer and I won't have to be part of that rat race going back and forth to the valley every, every weekend. Um, I'm sorry. I've been here 67 years. I intend on being here for the rest of my life. And I'm really amazed at the quabble statements of they don't like the flags on Kabarton. They don't like this. They don't like that. Um, did they look? at the property before Mike and Elisha moved in. Thank you.
Great, thank you. My name is uh, Kobe Ricky. I live at 465 Cabarton Road. Um, I just kind of wanted to come up here and uh, say that I'm sorry to everyone. I am uh, a kid that everyone's complaining about driving up and down the road. Um, yes, we have plenty of uh, side-by-sides, four-wheelers, dirt bikes, but uh, some of the complaints are saying that they go 55 miles an hour. We buy older vehicles because they don't cost as much and we're not worried about if they crash. Not one of them can go 55 miles an hour because they're a lot older. Um, I just wanted to apologize for um, me not being considerate of everyone. Um, we used to live in uh, Boise, Idaho. Uh, we had 10 acres. And it was super fun because I just had all the land to just drive around. And now that we're up here, we didn't have as much. Um, I recently had a chest surgery that was completed and I was cooped up for six months. And then once we moved up here, it gave me a lot more freedom to re-roam. Um, but I just wanted to apologize to everyone who was complaining about me going up and down the road. Um, and... I also just wanted to say that Mike and Alicia have done a lot for this community. They might not have seen it, but Mike and Alicia did um, a crawfish feed down at Tuck Tom. Um, we did a complete fundraiser. Um, we brought in a lot of food from Louisiana and it was pretty expensive. And um, at the end of it, Mike and Alicia did not make one penny. All of it went to um, Cascade schooling. Um, we, Mike and Alicia, did not mind because it was going to something part of the community. And from what we've heard, everyone that knows about Mike and Alicia because they did the crawfish feed was so happy because they've never really had anything like that. Um, but other than that, I just wanted to apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Is, it, is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor? Okay, we will move on to testimony of the un, uncommitted. Is there anyone? Okay, we'll move forward with testimony of opponents. Thank you. Please, please state your name and address for the yes, record. Yes, my name is Bob Carr. I've had a home at 214 Polcat Ridge Road for the past 18 years. I'm against the conditional use permit at this moment. Looking at the application, it lacks specificity and details. It's, and the new one has surprised me. I didn't know that. The plot plan's a casual drawing that lacks nearly all the elements required. Many of the answers provided in the questionnaire are qualifiers. We may, we plan, perhaps we're considering. Instead of specific, we are going to do this, we're going to do this. Um, the entire application seems to be a casual document that will lead to casual development and in turn lead to problems in enforcement. During the summer, last summer, I counted six occupied RV trailers on the property. It was clearly a violation of the current three ta trailer permit. I'm concerned that they will again violate the terms of this CUP. Within this application, the plot plan, the old one, indicates seven trailer spaces, yet on page 3, 8C, they state no more than 10 campers. And then on page two of their introduction letter, they talk about an occasional week out of the summer, we may host a family reunion that may mean up to 15 trailers. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think they clearly understand the limitations or they're just disregarding them. At this time, there's four trailers on the property. And I don't know if own trailers count within that or not. I guess Cindy could tell us that. And next thing is fire danger. I have 37 years experience in wildfire suppression. And I'd like to reinforce Chief Hull's comments on wildfire danger. We all saw how destructive the Four Corners fire was and how resistant it was to control even with an endless water supply. We were very fortunate to have six water scooping air tankers available. 
the parcel that they're proposing the, the CUP on <clears throat> in a private RV park is a huge fire hazard. The dry grass and sage understory with thick low branched conifers is the perfect ladder fuel situation in which the dry grass ignites, runs under the conifers, goes up the conifers, you have a crown fire which will race up that slope to the top of the hill. It'll take out houses. We don't have a fire suppression aircraft. We have some small ones in McCall. Other than that, there aren't any. Um, another crown fire would be disastrous. The Four Corners fire started at the top of the slope. It backed down and then you got some crown runs. This is conifers all the way to the top of the ridge. If you've got a fire, thank you. Great, thank you. Ron Melchiori, 237 Ponderosa. And you know, um, I could have brought my whole family here too. But I didn't. And my problem is, I drive by this. My question is, if you've seen it, do you think it's appropriate for a residential neighborhood to have something like this right in the middle of it? And during the summer, I saw more tents than we've been talking about. I've seen tents all over the place, different sizes. I've seen trash at the end of the driveway. And a miracle today, I went out for breakfast and when I came back, all the trash disappeared. You know, so my question is, if you've seen it, would you want this in your neighborhood? <clears throat> uh, Tom McGlashan, I live at 469 Cobarton Road, so I'm the adjacent neighbor. So at the beginning, I would sincerely like to thank our neighbors at the Smiths for one important reason. In the one year that they have held the residential campground permit, they have, to our knowledge, never once violated the quiet hour suggestions that go along with that permit. And for this, we are genuinely grateful. It was one of our biggest fears. For our part, in the fall, we did not utilize the burn pile that was near our property line next to where the neighbors cited what we call the flag RV, small steps. There were other impacts of the campground, however. Some were merely annoying and others were quite distressing. On the downside, the placement of the above mentioned flag RV on our northern property line is particularly invasive. Our plans to develop that adjacent lawn area into a more formal garden for private pursuits seems for the moment to be in limbo. On the lighter side, very occasional incursions by the neighbor's dogs are less worrisome. We generally get along well with dogs. In between those two extremes though, are gunshots, ATV and motorcycle noise, raised voices shouting across the neighboring property, dogs barking, loud personal vehicles, boats and trailers parked along our property line, trash at the end of the driveway, etc. In the end, all we have is hope that either we will be able to adapt to these changes or that the neighbors will find ways to produce order out of the chaos. What I am afraid of is that my heart will not be able to tolerate the effects of a fourfold increase in the number of units at 465 Cabarton. The corresponding increase in the number of visitors could actually be greater than that factor of four. And as I read and reread the applicant's own words in support of this project, I've become more anxious still. I had hoped to find data and evidence to support their assertions, and there seemed to be none. I'm confused by the references to the many disabilities and impairments and references to therapy animals, and I find no explanation in their document. And furthermore, in reading the several paragraphs relating to family values and community service, I am dismayed at the implication that they are thought to be relevant for this discussion, or concerned perhaps that they are only emotional appeals instead of creating an easily understood plan with believable outcomes. I'm worried about the nine RVs of this RV park multiplying in the way that the three permitted RVs in the residential campground seem to multiply. I'm concerned about the appearance and depreciation of the boats and RVs that are stored on the property over the winter. I'm extremely nervous about the security implications for our family in the face of mul multiple transient visitors, none of whom we know. And I am most concerned that we have irretrievably lost the neighborly relations that we have always had over the years with the various residents at 465 Cabart Road. 
The strains on the social bonds of our neighborhoods and communities are real, and our appeal before the commission is to help save us from ourselves. One paragraph. I do not wish the neighbors ill will in their quest to maximize their property's value, but I cannot help but see that given such a vague and confoundingly misleading basis for the development of this RV park, that it cannot help but spiral downward, out of control, in ways that we cannot imagine. The risks are frightening to contemplate and the rewards are not shared proportionately. I ask the commission to deny this permit. Thank you. Thank you. White Jividen 413 Kabartan. Um, I like RV parks and I think we need more of them. I like accessory dwelling units and we need to allow more of them. And the Smiths seem like nice people. However, I believe it is an abysmal failure on the county's part. And I hope you're embarrassed to have ordinances that allow the Smith RV park to exist in its present location and present condition. I beg you to change the ordinances so that this travesty does not happen to other neighborhoods. Smith RV Park is this disgusting eyesore in an area of otherwise nice homes on acreage lots. The RV Park has an almost zoo-like appearance with campers and tents and vehicles jammed into the property. Property values are obviously negatively affected by its existence. I speak from experience with 35 years as a real estate agent. On the random times that I have driven by, which is really seldom, I see other vehicles slowing like me, or even stopped on Kabartan just looking, some even taking pictures. They're probably all amazed like I was. I was one of the people who called the county to ask if this could possibly be legal. And I was dumbfounded when I was told that this is legal. From the reaction of the lady that I spoke to at the county, many others have called the county about the same thing. Many of the customers of the RV park drive way too fast. And from the, my occasional trips, I know what some of the vehicles that park there and drive by. I can identify them. Too fast, back and forth, sometimes late. A truly profound thing about this application is that the owners of the Smith's RV Park want to expand beyond the ordinance is a glaring statement of the owner's extreme lack of self-awareness. They obviously have no idea how unreasonable and truly offensive their RV park is already to the neighborhood. The Smith's idea also in there was to, in the future, build a six foot privacy fence around the property, which is laughable. The fence would only continue to uglify the mess and ensure that the property looks absolutely like an industrial park. The RV park land runs uphill from Cabarton and with a six foot fence, no matter where you put it, all the mess and the chaos will still be visible. Please deny the application. The RV park is already too much. And please revive the ordinances so that this travesty cannot happen to other neighborhoods. Thank you. Robin Miller, 413 Cabarton Road. My opening thing is, is this really the precedent you want to set? Because I live on 25 acres with my brother. Do you want me to apply for a CUP for all of my family and friends? I have a very small family, but I got a lot of friends. And I could put a lot of RVs and it would look very unsightly. The reference was made to Trinity Pines expanding. Yes, they are. You can't see a thing from Cabarton. It's way back because I live two doors down from Trinity Pines. Um, 
the motion was <laughs> mention was made of a camping experience that this is providing a camping experience really on Cobarton Road. I, I'm sorry, I disagree with that one. I agree that it's adverse property values. It is not good. Uh, people, honestly, I'm sorry for the Smith family, but all summer long last year, everybody's going, what is with the RV park on Cobarton? As far as the flags, I have not heard anyone complain about the flags. No one I know has complained about the American flags out front. That's just fine. Um, as far as porta potties, Kate, she stated the family comes in and uses the septic, so you're overloading your septic. Your septic is only approved for a certain amount of bathrooms, uh, occupancy, et cetera, when you're building a house. So your strain is there. So then you have the porta potty, which I don't know where they said it was located, but I could see it when I drove down Cobarton, and it's really not what I want to look at. Um, whether or not it is commercial, it has the appearance, unfortunately, of commercial. It looks junky. And as far as the approval for three last summer, <laughs> no, minimum six, usually seven, RVs and or campers. That's not counting tents. And we were back and forth a lot during the fire, checking things out when we were going over to West Mountain. And they were there all summer long. Uh, as far as leaving there in the winter, if you've experienced a winter here, you really shouldn't leave an RV out in the winter and Cascade, it's not a good idea. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bobby By Candy. I'm 572 Cabarton Road. So I am the property right across from where this is at. Um, a little about us I am a lifetime Idaho resident. My grandchildren are the eighth generation of farmers and ranchers, and um, we purchased this property on Cabarton Road a year and a half ago to continue that legacy for my grandchildren. Um, I am opposed to this project due to the fact that I am currently suffering property damage from the resident that is operating this current um, trailer park, or I don't know what you guys call it, RV place. They are taking their snow that they're taking out of all of their residents and taking it across the road and piling it on my property and taking down my fences. So my property is the 200 plus acres from where the, the Northwest Nazarene is all the way up to West Mountain Road. So from what I can see, the current mock-up plan proposes no place for the gray water. I was unaware of the people that come once a week and take away gray water in this area, but my big concern is if that gray water gets away, goes across the street, floods through my property and gets to the river, it's going to be blamed on my livestock. It's not gonna be blamed on human error. I'm also deeply concerned about dogs. I don't know if any of you have cattle, but you know that cattle that have been ran by a dog are unmanageable cattle, and we'd have to get rid of them given who runs our livestock, which are young, young kids. Um, I'm worried about fire lanes in that area. If you have a fire, there would be no way that a fire truck could get in there. They would have to have access some other way. Um, and the the applicant stated that the trash is all gone. I arrived at 347 from my job today and the sofas are still sitting out by the road. I took a picture of them. And in closing, you know, two, I have 200 acres across the street. If I did what these people are doing, my friends and family could have 400 parking spots for their trailers. I can find a lot of friends and I have a lot of family. So I just ask that you please deny this application. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Um, Mike Hendrickson, 16 Cabarden Road. I live to the south of this noted facility. Um, I like the record uh, to, to uh, show that I accept the young man's apology. Um, his, his writing was a little uh, problematic, but he apologized. I'm good with that. Um, I'd also like the record to state that. Idahoans are not the only ones that died and suffered for American in Americas. We all suffered, a lot of us did. 
So, in having said that, I oppose any future permitting requests, what they've already done, they've spent money. It, it seems and appears to be enough for their family as long as they manage trash and so forth, but any future expansion should be denied. Um, also, I'm going to concur with many of the items that the previous speaker spoke about, but not all of them. I do want to address that the permitting um, pages, items five on page two, page eight, item one, page eight, item five, item seven on page nine, item 12 on page nine, item 14 on page 10, were not addressed um, correctly and fully to address the situations that the county and zoning would need for their information on approving these uh, particular items. NA is not an acceptable method for answering a question when there is, in fact, justifiable uh, means for um, documenting and data for fire pits, particulates, and so on. So I asked the Zoning Commission to revisit the permit and check those blocks to make sure they're properly filled out. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? Evening, I'm Paul Warham. I live at 156 Pine Valley Drive, and I pretty much agree with what's been said up until now regarding uh, the opposition, and your staff did a, a great job laying out some concerns. Um, so I'll just keep it really brief. Um, I feel like you know, this project has already been completed, and now we're asking for a permit. You know, there was numerous campers in there last year, um, whether some were parked and unused or not, it's, it's very difficult to tell. It's very difficult to police. There, and that's kind of why I would oppose this project, because who would police this matter going forward? Who's to say it's not going to turn into a commercial endeavor? You can go online nowadays and basically go rent a campsite, even a tent site uh, for the night in these rural locations in places like Cascade. There's numerous websites where you can do this. Um, I just think that this project has implications for huge impact on the neighbors. You're talking about light pollution, noise pollution. You get a group of people around a campfire and they're talking and they don't mean to be loud. I understand that. But, you know, maybe they're having a drink or two and the voices carry in the clear night that we have here. And people, you know, we're just emerging from this very long winter and people want to get out and enjoy their yard or their property during the summer months when they can. And if someone's sitting on their front porch and all they can hear is a noise from a big group next door who's camping in a camper, um, it's, it's terrible. And we have a problem in, in Valley County, and that is that people come up to Valley County and it's a vacation. Oh, I'm going to the, to the woods. And they ride ATVs, they drive, they behave in a manner that is not consistent with what they do at home. And we all see this. Um, and that's a problem. And that's, that kind of goes back to the whole nature of this project. It's already there. It shouldn't be, but it, it's already there. And going forward, there's going to be impacts on services to the community. There's going to be impacts on the road and the neighbors. So I would just urge um, y'all to deny the project. Thank you. Thank you. It's going on. I'll be brief. Uh, my name is Jeff Lamb. My wife and I own the property at 481 Cabarton Road. And uh, I think we're both four, fourth generation Idahoans, so we love this country. Our Maurice's parents went to high school here in Cascade, so we love Cascade. And, uh, you know, everybody likes to camp, and we like to get out. But our biggest, our biggest concern is, I agree with this gentleman here, it's the fire concern. We have probably over 250 ponderosa pine trees on our property. And some of them, we had a forester come by and he said some of them were uh, about the time Christopher Columbus came here. So our kids named this tree Christopher Columbus. And uh, so we want to protect these trees. And I know when everybody wants to go camping, people want to have a campfire. And if each individual camper up there has a campfire, then what a fire risk that is. And that's our biggest concern here. And that, and you know, if this is approved, 
you know, I think it opens up a can of worms for all of Valley County that people will catch on to this and think that, you know, like the, the buy candy said, um, everybody wants to have their friends and family up here with the trailers and everything. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's a, a good vote for Valley County. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Karen Johnson and I live at 221 Pole Cat Ridge Road, which is south of this designated cup request. First of all, I want to say I agree with a lot of the opposition points that have been made so far. Very good. And then I have to take a look at, well, okay, what is the real criteria that we are using here to judge this cup? So I had to go on to the Valley County uh, Comprehensive Plan. And I'm going to let you know, the cup number 2306 does not comply. First of all, you know, these cup, uh, these uh, comprehensive plan is to protect property. And that is of the neighboring dwellings. It's to protect their values. We are also here uh, with the VCCP, which is the Valley County Comprehensive Plan, to secure the most appropriate use of land and lands. And guess what? That's single dwelling. It is zone single dwelling residence slash multiple use. However, we need to take a look at the control of density of the population. Most families have two to six people. At this cup, we are looking at sizable amounts of more people, high density. Hmm. Also, the Valley County Comprehensive Plan wants to preserve the scenic and aesthetic values, and of course, to help prevent those traffic congestions. Well, looking at this neighborhood, it is designated as a single family resident with multiple use. The density of this population requested in the cup is beyond single family residency and it is beyond the multiple use of a cup. There is an RV park code 9-4-9 and this indicates that this cup is like an RV park Then it needs to be addressed as an RV park. It is not compatible or nor appropriate for the use of the neighborhood. So what I'd like to do is just say that Valley County needs to be protected. The RB Park is an imposition to adjacent lands. We've discussed that. You know what? There are RV parks and campgrounds in the Cascade vicinity that will accommodate family and friends campers and RVs and tents. So therefore, keep these campers and RVs at those designated businesses. Great. The only thing I'd like to see is keep Valley County strong, deny this cup. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? Um, Michelle McGlashan, I live at 469 Cabarton Road, adjacent to the proposed CUP. Um, I have been a special ed teacher in, at Cascade High School for th over 30 years. I have worked with a hundred of students with various disabilities and also with their families. I will tell you that the issues surrounding disabilities are always both extremely personal and highly detailed. In this conditional use permit application, the arguments presented are neither. Personal details that are expected and valued are nowhere to be found. And the, detail, and the detailed plans for accommodations are left to the imagination. As a commission, you are being asked to make a decision about an RV park project, which in large, in a, in large part revolves around disabled, chronically ill, 
or mobility impaired visitors, and you are being given almost no information on which to make an informed judgment. The issues are quite complex, even on a personal level, and the statements that these visitors are going to be safe and accommodated are not verified. With regards to the impact on our property and peace of mind, the residential campground of last year affected me. More than Tom, at an emotional and psychological level. And the culprit of is the Class C RV parked right next to our property line overlooking our north yard. I feel that I lost access to the large chunk of, of our property. I am uncomfortable walking on the piece of yard for fear that I will be accused of spying. I have second thoughts about watering the blueberries suspicious that I am going to be judged in some way. And there is no escaping the feeling that my presence in my yard is now infringing on the privacy of the ill-placed RV. I shudder to think about the addition of six additional, or whatever they are now, RVs, we'll leave out the tiny houses, and what it will be do to my sense of comfort and security in being at my own home. I miss quiet and peacefulness of the neighborhood of just a short time ago. I worry that the hooting of the howl owls that my husband loves so much might become a thing of the past. I worry that even the simple pastime of sitting on my porch with a cup of coffee, noticing neighbors walking their dog and bicycling by, and I fear that what used to be our Cabarton Road green belt is now turning into a racetrack. And lastly, it's annoying <laughs> that I feel I have to play a part in reporting violations of the permits term. I do not want to be the kind, this kind of neighbor. With the addition of many additional RVs and ATVs and the limited parking options proposed in the site map, I'm nervous that in order to protect my property rights, I will be forced to be put in that position. No, thank you. Please deny this cup. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? Okay, at this time, we will um, move forward with the rebuttal by the applicant. a lot of things that um, I don't think I'm going to be able to address more than what we already have. Um, we've revised the plan to allow three RV spots so that we know where they will be parked. That was part of the problem last summer is people would just, you know, pull in. I didn't understand until I had spoken to Mrs. Green with the ordinances that um, just the RVs being there um, on the property counted as one of the RVs. So I had to prove that I own two of them. I mean, that, that's one of those things. But like I said, we're gonna, we want to put it away so you cannot see those. Um, and so it will just be the three. Are you, Cinder, are you able to put the map back up? Mm -hmm. um, so the fire pit that is there has been there forever. And I, I know that we submitted a picture of the fire pit. Um, it is, it's up, elevated up off the ground and there is I don't even know how many feet of gravel all the way around it. Uh, there's, there's no, I mean, we understand embers. We get it. We've been camping our whole life. We understand fire safety. Our kids understand fire safety. And we had put the uh, dotted uh, fire pit down because, again, we didn't know whether or not there was options, if there was something that they felt more comfortable with. It's in the best place possible right now without all the trees there. Down below, it would not be, but we, I mean, not moving anything, it's exactly where it has been. Um, let's see. The tents, we've addressed that. Um, we, at one point, we have had three tents up, and yes, one of them was bigger. Again, we have four kids. And that they all have jobs and they all have lives and they're up here for a few days. And yes, there were two times that my kids had to run back to town for a week. And I was like, you know what, just leave your tent up. 
I get it. I won't, that won't be a thing anymore. I get that. Cause I, I made that decision just because I was like, it is hard to put up a tent and down every single time I get that. So I'm like, just leave it there, but we will have more appropriate places to place the tent so that they're not on Cabarton road. We will get them more secluded or make some area. That's a good tenting area for them. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, and that was one of the reasons why people are able to see everything so well on our property is because we did trim up the trees. So the dried, I don't know what it's called. I'm not a landscaper, but it's it's well off the ground now. So it's not, it was it was an extreme fire hazard before, but we, we have raised those up, which ultimately opened up our property to be very visible from Cabarton. Um, that's probably my only regret is if we would have left that there, then it probably wouldn't have upset so many people, but we did want to make it more fire safe. Um, we had invited people to be able to come over and stay on our property and use our empty RVs when the um, fire went off. Um, we contacted the city and let them know. Again, we're, we're not bad people and we don't want to upset anybody. We just, the three that are already there, and I don't know if this is appropriate to be able to explain what the... Um, permit is, but it's for three RVs to be on the property for more than, I don't know what it is, a month or something like that, where they're there. It's not saying someone's living there. This is not multiple residences. We live there. That's our home. They are here. And the ones that are there the most are the two that are across from our property. And they are my, my dad, my mom, my uncle, and my aunt. So those are the ones that are going to be there the majority of the summer time. Um, they brought, there's too much snow on there, so they brought their RV up to be able to come up here. And so we just have them parked in front of our house right now. So I don't even know if that can be seen, but we have them. We just have their small RV right in front of our house uh, for a few days. So we're willing to accommodate and do what we can so that we're not upsetting anybody. Um, um, on the property line, I do want to say that, it yes, it is absolutely their, um, their property there. And back at the RV the where the flag is, I, we thought that it was out of the way more, that it was out of sight, out of the way. I understand what they're saying, that they feel like it's encroaching, but I can assure you we know better than anybody what it feels like to have people on their property and close to the property line zooming in and taking pictures on us. And you can see the pictures that there are. There are people that walked all the way up on our property, um, and it's just not nice. I understand the feeling that they're, that they're saying is that it's uncomfortable being in your own yard. Well, guess what? I'm uncomfortable every time I go outside wondering who's going to say what or who's going to stop and take a picture. And we don't want that any more than anybody else does. So um, I just want everybody to know and re reiterate the septic. No one is using the septic. Yeah, my kids come in and take a shower a couple times, but they all have full-time jobs. They were maybe, my oldest daughter was maybe up for a total of five nights last summer. So yeah, she probably took two showers. So it's not, we're still a single family residence when it's just us. So I, I want to reiterate that it is not, it's not having any effect on the septic system at all. And that we do get them pumped. Um, the porta potty, if there's a place that you guys would prefer it be, I have more people saying they don't know where the porta potty is or where we're going to put it. I did hear the, la the lady say that she did see it, and I'm, I'm sorry if she doesn't like how it looks. We can build something so you can't see it. I don't know. But um, most people can't see it. And if you can and you want us to move it, we're really flexible and open to things, whatever we can do to accommodate um, and make the commission happy. Um, anything else? That's it. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Okay, at this time, we will go ahead and close the public hearing and open it up for deliberations. Um, I can start. Um, I appreciate everyone's public comment. We have a lot of the same concerns. I think the biggest thing for me, excuse me, we're in a meeting. Can we please turn the mic towards yourself? Sasha. Sorry. Um, we have, in my opinion, there's a lot of things that we really could go over and we can go over them, you know, one by one. Uh, but to me, we have a couple of things. We have agencies that are wanting us to deny this application, Central District Health, and we really can't proceed forward without that approval. Did you um, see the letter that they s submitted yesterday approving it? Oh no, I didn't. Sorry, no, I didn't look. It was that. one of my exhibits. So that was one of them. That was one of them. So that one can go away. So that's fine. Um, 
this doesn't meet our ordinances, this doesn't meet our comprehensive plan, and it's not, it has a negative compatibility rating, and I had a far lower one than Cinda did, um, or than staff did. So, but there, I mean, there, and there are lots of other issues. There's fire issues and, and many other of the concerns, um, property values of neighboring properties, um, and we can go into all of those. I'm sure Ken and um, Catwin can speak to that more, but really with the compatibility rating being what it is and I, what I personally feel like is not following our ordinances or our comprehensive plan, this is not something that I would feel comfortable approving. Commissioner Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> I guess um, I agree with Sasha on uh, a couple of the points she's made. Um, I guess for me, there's a couple things that enter in here. One is the application was actually amended today. So the up application that we have before us and it's been noticed to the public is not what's being considered tonight. So that's problem number one. Um, number two, I agree with the negative compatibility rating. Um, and when I look at the compatibility ratings, I look at three things. The first questions, one, two, and three, are they compatible with the adjacent uses? And in all cases, they receive a negative compatibility rating, basically because the proposed use of the property, this lot within a single uh, family uh, subdivision, subdivision is uh, not compatible uh, with that type of neighboring uses. It's one of the reasons that people buy lots in subdivision is to know that that type of a single family residence is going to be what their neighbors do as well. They knowingly buy into that. They don't knowingly buy into a subdivision that has a hotel coming next to it or some other use. Uh, so those are so they're concerning things. Um, number three, I think there's, uh, you know, application of our ordinances need to be consistent. Uh, we have had several denials of applications in the last year or two on similar type uh, applications. Um, I, when I read the letter from Central District Health that they reissued today, um, it also speaks of, uh, it says, I'll just read, it said the systems proposed, nor will any of the RVs or structures seek connection to the existing septic system serving the home. The applicant basically uh, indicated that the residents do come into the home and use the facilities there, which is not what a single family uh, uh, septic system is approved for. Um, I don't see any mention of a, a wildfire mitigation plan, which we require firstly on all conditional use permits uh, in timberlands. Uh, but I was, I don't know who it was that testified about some of the, the um, comprehensive plan. If we make a decision, if we just arbitrarily say, oh, we don't like it, or we do like it, and we don't land on something that is embedded in the Idaho law or in the ordinances or in the comprehensive plan, then we get start to get on shaky ground. But the comprehensive plan um, for Valley County speaks very strongly to private property rights in chapter three of the comprehensive plan under goal one says, I quote, protect individual private property rights while considering community rights. And then there are several objectives under that of which there are multiple ones, which I'm not gonna take the time to read those, uh, which run in conflict with this application about adjoining neighbors' property values and their property rights, not just the rights of the applicant. And there's a balance in Idaho law where you need to maintain those two balances. And that's part of our job as a planning and zoning commission is to maintain that balance. And I guess last of all, under the code, and I send them, I need to just help citing this, but I think it's the 9-4-9 under the parks where it's granted up to two or three. Mm -hmm. And this request goes beyond that. Uh, up to six, and I don't believe that's what the ordinance was intended for. So for those reasons, I do not feel um, favorable towards this application. I agree. I could repeat all of the same issues, but I won't. Um, but those were all some of my concerns as well. Um, 
definitely fire danger, fire danger, the septic overuse of a single family septic, um, parked versus occupied RVs. Um, dogs are a concern. We, we do live in an agricultural area and we've actually had that on several other applications where we have made that, um, made the applicant aware of those concerns. Um, and again, just to repeat what Commissioner Roberts said about the, compa the, the compatibility, my first three were negative as well because it really isn't compatible with the surrounding uses. Madam Chairman, I would move the condition use permit 23-06 of the 465 Cabarton Road uh, be denied. I'll second. There's a motion and a second um, to deny CUP 23-06. Is there any further discussion? No. Okay. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 All, all opposed? Okay. CUP 23-06 Smith Family Camping Site and Multiple Residences is denied. There is a 10-day appeal period in which anyone can appeal the decision of the commission to the Board of County Commissioners in accordance with Title 9-5H-12 of the Valley County Code. We take a five-minute break. Yes, yes, I was going to say that. That's where I was going. Yep. <laughs> we are going to take a five-minute break, and then we will return back with CUP 23-08.
Got it, Cap. Okay, you guys are live. Thank okay. you. Oh, Ken's phone. At this time, we're going to move forward with CUP 23-08, Fredrickson RV rental site. This time, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Has, has there been any ex parte contact, or does anyone have a conflict of interest? No. Okay. We'll move forward with the staff report, please. Here. Staff can get it together. <laughs> So this is the site, and it is in a single-family subdivision. Right here. It's two, two lots that have been combined. It's lots 12 and 13, block 4 of the Wagon Wheel Ranch, subdivision number 5. So CUP 2308, Fredrickson RV rental site. It's okay, this door is open, Lori. Okay. Open. Um, the applicant, Steve Fredrickson, property is addressed at 12784 Cascade Drive and 12786 Cascade Drive in the Wagon Wheel Ranch, number five subdivision, lots 12 and 13, block four. The property is 0.93 acres. Uh, Steve Fredrickson is requesting a conditional use permit for the rental of five recreational vehicle sites on two adjacent lots. The application states no short-term rental of the RV sites. The current owner is allowed to have one RV camper on each of the two lots. Approval of the conditional use permit would allow an additional three RVs. The site is landscaped and established. In approximately 2002, the previous owner installed utilities on these two lots and put a mobile home and four RV spaces on the property with the intention of providing housing for construction workers that he employed. Planning and zoning at that time stated that they had no issue with the use and did not require a conditional use permit. The mobile home was removed in 2005. North Lake Sewer and Water District uh, supplies sewer services. Sewer hookups at each RV site currently exist, and potable water would be supplied by two existing wells. Access would be from Cascade Drive, a public road. The application was submitted on February 17, 2023. A revised site plan was submitted by the applicant on March 22nd. Legal notice was posted in the Star News on March 23rd, March 30th. Potentially affected agencies were notified on March 14th. Property owners within 300 feet of the property line were notified by fact sheets on March 20th. The notice and application were posted on the Valley County website on March 14th. And the site was posted on March 29th. Agency comments received. Central District Health has no objections, provided sites can connect to the Central Sewer from North Lake Recreational Sewer and Water District. Jess Ellis, Donnelly Fire Marshal, responded with requirements. Public comments received. Craig and Kim Mann, 229 Birch Lane, are opposed. The air is changing with nice homes and lots being cleaned up. Darnell and Anita Alexander at 277 Birch Lane are opposed. Commercial and business enterprises are changing the character and heritage of the Wagon Wheel Ranch subdivision. The for-profit businesses are gutting the residential summer home character of our neighborhood. Monty Ivy, 227 Angus Lane, is opposed. The neighborhood should not be turned into a campground. Scott and Angie Nunes, 12782 Cascade Drive, is opposed. They share a driveway with the lots. The lots have been rented to multiple full-time residents in older, dilapidated RVs and tents. The site typically has six to eight vehicles and a growing collection of trailers, four-wheelers, and other projects. The use negatively impacts property values and would allow a higher density than the designed one dwelling per lot. Should not detract the natural beauty and rural charm with unsightly developments. Um, the property is relatively flat with scattered trees, surrounded by single-family residential uh, subdivision. This proposal is categorized under five commercial uses, E, recreation, business, four campgrounds and facilities, or two residential uses, J, multiple residences on one parcel. Different areas of the Valley County Code are listed here for your review. Staff's compatibility rating was a positive 24. The Planning and Zoning Commission should do their own compatibility rating prior to the meeting. Um, the forms were attached. Staff comments and questions. The site is within the Dolly Fire District and Hurt District. Sewer services are provided by North Lake Recreational Sewer and Water District. 
Water is provided by individual wells and it's not within an irrigation district. How many people would be allowed on site? What would, who would monitor proper hookup to waste disposal? Staff recommends requiring trash service from Lakeshore Disposal. Um, I brought up the 1971 ordinance in here. The definition of recreational vehicle campground, which is two or three. Um, but since this is, they don't live on site and these will all be rentals, then it's not considered an RVC campground, an RV campground. Just for your information. Propose, um, commission should determine if the mitigation of trees and placement of, of the RV should allow for the setbacks to be the same as residential, um, the recreational vehicle campground, or as private recreation campground. Conditions of approval, the application, the staff report, and the provisions of the land use and development ordinance are all made part of this permit as if written in full herein. Any violation of any portion of the permit will be subject to enforcement of the penalties in accordance with Title 9-2-5 and may include revocation of a, or suspension of a conditional use permit. Any change in the nature or scope of land use activity shall require an additional conditional use permit. The issuance of this permit and these conditions will not relieve the applicant from complying with applicable county, state, or federal laws or regulations or be construed as permission to operate in violation of any statute or regulations. Violation of these laws, regulations, or rules may be grounds for revocation of the conditional use permit or grounds for suspension of the conditional use permit. The use shall be established within one year. A permit will be required. All lighting must comply with the Valley County Lighting Ordinance. All lights should be fully shielded so that there is not upward or horizontal projection of lights. No rental of RV sites for less than 30 days. A maximum of five RVs may be on the property. All noxious weeds on the property must be controlled. Campfire shall be maintained in an established fire ring. Water shovel and or fire extinguisher must be in close proximity. Snow must be stored on site. The site must be kept in a neat and orderly manner. Shall clearly post the physical address of the driveway entrances. Noise shall be kept to a minimum between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Trash, trash service is required from Lakeshore Disposal or future trash contractor. No parking in the setback areas or the road rights of ways and then may potentially be required to do a road development agreement if you think if you choose to approve this and think that they should. Um, but this, since then we've received additional correspondence. This is exhibit one. This is from the Valley County engineer. And they say site grading and all drainage plans are not required for this application. However, the applicant is required to retain all stormwater resulting from site improvements on site and will protect adjacent properties, waterways, and or roadway ditches from soil erosion and sedimentation using appropriate best management practices. Um, the applicant purchased this property. I'll let them talk about that. Um, it's been an established RV park area. And that ends my staff report. Okay, are, are there any questions for staff? The, this is the kind of site plan. This is the property line going in between. So there's two on this lot. It looks like there's another. There's two here. There's one. There's one. That one is up on that road there. It's kind of, so there's the hookups there. It's kind of here. Oh, right yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of on the They're road. here and here. Okay. Any questions for staff? Um, Sint, I have one question. Is was there a previous? So in the in two thousand two, the pre previous owner installed utilities on the lots, leaving two hookups per lot for RVs. But they did. Are you are you saying they did not have a CUP in two thousand two? They did not. I told them that they did, the, and they appealed my decision to the PNZ Commission, and the PNZ Commission said they didn't need it because they were just camping on the property, and his uh, contractors were living there. Okay. Thank you. Who's contractors? Jimmy Yates, the previous owner, right? Jimmy Yates had a mobile home there and then four RV spots. Your neighbor. Is he still alive? No. Okay, if there's no more questions for staff, we'll go ahead with the press. Oh, actually, I do have a question for Senda. Walk me through how this qualifies as a number four mobile home or an RV park versus a 20. Uh, 
area business. In table nine dash three dash one. I'm looking at is recreation business. Number four is campgrounds and facilities. It's the closest thing I came up with. It could also be C, service business. Motel, hotel, apartment, resort, bed and breakfast or lodge, but this is a long-term rental. They're not gonna have any short-term, so it's not a service thing that turns over all the time. Um, it, and that's why I also put the residential because it could be considered the multiple residences or residential uses on one parcel. They're residential uses. It's, it's nothing that was anticipated when this table was prepared. So, oh. When that comes up, it's up to the Planning and Zoning Commission to determine what category it goes in. Because we couldn't, it, they didn't, they couldn't think of everything to put in here. And in those days, people just didn't do this. And the surrounding lots are all single family residential. The whole the area is platted single family subdivisions, but wagon wheel area also has a lot of um, RVs out in it. This, it was the wagon wheel area that inspired us to write our RVC ordinance because everybody had two to three RVs on their property because they couldn't get septics at the time. And then they got sewer, and then everyone just started hooking up their sewers. Does that kind of help? Maybe, um, maybe it helps. I, okay. well, I'm, just nine, trying, I'm just trying to find consistency in the okay. applications. Well, I don't know that the applications are consistent when they're each individual and specific to different applications, different parcels. Each application we look at is different. Um, you know, as as we go from one application to another. If you look at 9-4-1B, it says if land use is proposed which is not provided for within section 9-3-1, table three of this title, its status as a permitted or conditional use shall be determined by the Planning and Zoning Commission based upon its similarity and dissimilarity to uses that are listed. Well, it speaks to a lot of similarities, then, right. um, the types of uses. Right. So you would you would choose one that was similar, you know, like a long-term rental. Yeah. I'm just trying to get through the compatibility rating. That's where I'm... Okay. Well, we're not in deliberations yet. We're not in deliberations. I, I just wanted to understand how you got where you did. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even look to see what I did. Okay, if there's nothing else for staff, we'll go ahead and hear from the applicant. Please come and state your name and address for the record. My name is Steve Fredrickson. I live at 4775 North Settlers Ridge in Boise, Idaho. Um, thank you for allowing me to come here tonight. Good to see you. Just as a little bit of background is that in about 2005 or six, I bought a couple pieces of property that Jimmy Yates had developed into the property that was just discussed. Um, my daughter 
was in college and was a realtor in the summer in Valley County. So I was helping her out and the markets were hot, hot like they were the last couple of years. You could buy something and so, so it was pretty risk-free. But shortly after that, the markets turned, Tamarack went upside down and those lots dropped in value a lot lower than I paid for them. So I hung on. And as the years went by, Jim Yates was the first guy to do this. Well, during that next 10 years, like Cinda mentioned, many of our neighbors put multiple RV parks on their lots all around us. And I thought, well, shoot, I'm sitting here paying taxes on this thing for 10 years. I might as well put a sign out there to see if somebody wants to rent it. Talking to, to Cinda and her crew, I was eligible to put on one RV per lot, which is great. Um, as time went by, I had these other hookups. And of course, um, people would want to say, hey, look, what I ended up being was the local labor force. I'm affordable housing. That's what I, so the people that live on in these lots are contractors, local workers, young, a young man that went to McCall High School. He lives in a trailer on the lot there. He pays me $400 a month. He, he'll be there for a long time if I let him. Um, and I, there's no reason I won't. Another guy's a, um, a framer. And he has a crew and he's asked me, can I have someone else stay in one of these other RV spaces? And I say, absolutely not. And I have contracts with them that say they've got to keep the place clean and they can't have anybody else living there because of the way the laws are written. And, and so I, anyway, what I'm trying to do is to provide a little bit more affordable housing to the crews that are currently renting one space. So and, and not all the time. My real intent is to, there's two lots, rent them out, but there's two extra spaces. And sometimes uh, it might be a subcontractor that's coming to town to work with these guys, needs a place to stay. Then we can go ahead and rent that space out to them and, and deal with it that way. I'm not, I'm really not looking to set up five separate tenants that are, that don't know each other on each lot. I want the opportunity though, to help house some of our workers that don't have a place to live. I think over time, as Valley County changes, solves their housing crisis, and people have more choices, this lot will be a great residential lot someday, as, as are the other RV lots in the neighborhood, as people abandon their RVs and build cabins, happens all the time. Well, I think that will happen there as well or on this piece of property. But in the meantime, I am affordable housing and I'd like to be able to offer a little bit more affordable housing to the current tenants I have for their crews and subcontractors. That's that simple. Um, okay. That's more than that. <laughs> Any questions? I'm good too. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. We'll move forward with public testimony. Is there anyone that would like to testify um, as a proponent? Anyone that is uncommitted? Anyone that's an opponent? Okay. Is there anything else that the applicant would like to state? No? Just that Cinda and her department have been fantastic. They, they, they are a great staff. Okay, with that, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing for deliberations. Uh, Ken, I think my mind was in the same place that yours um, is. Um, and I wanted to, since we're, we're now able to ask Cinda a little bit more on clarifying questions, on staff comments on number five, it says, um, it talks about the 1971 ordinance, but it says in this situation, I believe this use is categorized as a commercial recreational use. So I actually did my compatibility rate, compatibility rating both ways. Um, and it was really negative if I have a commercial recreational use. Um, so that, that was one question and concern. And Ken, I'm, I know you could probably piggyback onto that. Um, I have other ones, but maybe we should discuss this topic a little further. Well, on my matrix, I used um, long-term residential. Instead of, in, but yeah, it, I rated it as a residential use. 
even though this says, I believe this use is categorized as commercial recreational. Yes. Based upon its similarity with the, the long-term. I didn't think that it, it was an RV park, you know, with RVs coming in and out nightly and a recreation atmosphere. It was more for long-term rentals. So it was a similarity based upon that. No, go ahead. No, Madam Chairman, I get to um, the compatibility rating on the questions number uh, six for, for starters. Um, receives a positive two. And the question is, is the traffic volume and character to be generated by the proposed use similar to the uses on properties that will be affected by proximity to parking lots on site roads and access roads. Uh, I, I do not agree that it's a positive two because the other proposed similar uses of all of the other properties don't have this number of units on it. And virtually all of those are gonna have more cars they're going to be more cars and more traffic. And if you can imagine taking the scenario and applying it throughout the subdivision, which is basically what we would be doing to setting a standard, um, I don't see how that's a positive two. I, I came out with actually a negative two on that one. Not a negative two, but a negative two. And then the same thing on number five. Um, it says the size or scale of the proposed lots and or structures similar to adjacent ones. That may or may not be, depending on what a single family lot adjacent to it at Sindicet may have a mobile home or they may have an RV just parked on the lot that's hooked up to sleep. Um, but it is a single family residential. I, I actually went negative one on that as well. That took me below zero. Those are just some of the thoughts. And I'm trying to be consistent with what we've been doing. I think, um, for the record, I think we need to be able to look at Valley County Code 9 1 10. Um, it is specifically for the recreational use of the parcel by friends and family of the property. Sasha, I really can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just referencing the Valley County Code 9-1-10 for recreational vehicle campground. Although I know that you're saying it might be something else, but it definitely doesn't um, comply with that code. Um, and our ordinance does still allow for one RV per lot. So, so a total of two, like, like the applicant has now. Um, and although I do know we are struggling still for affordable housing in Valley County, I do think this is a dangerous precedent to be setting also. What was that ordinance? 9-1-0? Yeah, it's the bottom of page five. I tend to agree, and I'm kind of right on the line of this. Um, affordable housing is good. Uh, it sounds like it's workforce housing. Doesn't sound like all of these RVs are, or spots are going to be filled all the time. Um, but there are probably some concerns with concerns with the density and private property rights of the lots next to them. Um, although it sounds like wagon wheel has a lot of this going on. I, I wish we could know that somehow. Um, so we'd stay consistent, but we, we have had some applications that are somewhat similar to this in terms of rentals in a single family residential subdivision, so.
Um, I think based on trying to be consistent with this ordinance, because we are going to see a lot more of these applications, um, and we know that the applicant can still have one RV per lot, um, Madam Chairman, I would move that we deny CUP 23-08 Fredrickson RV rental site. Second motion. Yep, there's a motion and a second to deny CUP 23-08 Fredrickson RV rental site. Is there any further thoughts or deliberations? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. There is a 10-day appeal period in which you can, um, in which anyone can appeal the decision of the commission to the Board of County Commissioners in accordance with Title 9-5H-12 of the Valley County Code. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Keep moving on to CUP. 23-09, Frost Management Storage. At this time, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Has there been any ex parte contact, or does anyone have a conflict of interest? No. No. Okay. Let's move ahead with the staff report, please. Okay. So this is the property right here. Um, this is Roseberry down site here. Um, This is Puerto Rico's right here. They have storage there. There's a tow company out here and a, a post well drilling. Brown's Tow Service and Post Well. And the, this property is located here. So, CUP 2309, Frost Management Storage. Yalkins Farm to Market Land, LLC. This property is addressed at 13091 Farm to Market Road in Section 14, Township 16, North Range 3, East of the Boise Meridian, Valley County, Idaho. Farm to, Market, Farm to Market Land, LLC is requesting approval of a conditional use permit to construct a storage facility. The proposal includes a 10,000 square foot building to store items for their commercial business and personal items. No outside storage would be allowed. It would be about four to five visits per day to the site, more often in the winter, to transport snow removal equipment. Any individual septic system and individual well are proposed. A berm with trees is proposed for buffering the site from farm to market. The building and driveway would be fenced. Access would be from farm to market a public road. The 10.9 acre site is addressed at 13091 Farm to Market Road. The application was submitted on February 27th, 2023. Legal notice was posted in the Star News on March 23rd, March 30th. Potentially affected agencies were notified on March 14th. Property owners within 300 feet of the property line were notified by fact sheet sent March 20th. The notice and application were posted on the Valley County website on March 14th, and the site was posted March 29th. Agency comments received. Central District Health requires an application for a septic system. Jess Ellis, Donnelly Fire uh, Marshall stated what their requirements will be. Neighbor comments receive none. Physical characteristics of the site, it's irrigated pasture land that drains into Willow Creek. A portion of the property is in the floodplain and includes wetland areas. You can see floodplain here. And then there's some wetlands going across here. The structure will be back in, in this quadrant here. Surrounding land use and zoning includes to the north, agricultural, south, rural parcel, east and west are agricultural. The closest, this is the closest here. Oh, no, right across the road is another house. So that's, yep, yeah, I missed that one. So that's adjacent on the east side. So that's a residential. Paul Marshall. Um, listed various standards here. Categorized this as an area of business. Um, it adjoins um, agricultural land. So if there are cattle, they'll have to have a fencing plan. 
A staff's compatibility rating is a positive 10. Site is within the Donnelly Fire District, the Rosebury Irrigation District, and Herd District. What are the expected number of daily trips to the site? Will this vary seasonally? The applicant states that there will be about 45 visits a day to the site, more often in the winter to pick up and return snow removal equipment. Um, how will stormwater be kept from the creek and wetland areas? A stormwater management plan and or site grading plan will need to be approved by the Valley County Engineer. Right now, the stormwater is going down the hill to the drainage ditch. A berm will be built 15 feet away from the ditch to make sure the water will go into the ground before it reaches the creek. Will employees be on site? Employees will will be on site to pick up and drop off equipment. What will the building look like? Will the structure look like an agricultural building? The building will be a stick-built structure. The part of the building facing Farm to Market Road will have uh, fake barn doors. And then proposed conditions of approval one through four are typical ones. Five, shall obtain central district health approval prior to issuance of a building permit. Six, shall obtain building permits for all structures. Seven, must have an approval letter from Donnelly Fire Department. A letter of approval is required. Must obtain an approach permit in county right of way from the in the county right of way permit from the Valley County Road Department. That doesn't make any sense. Must obtain an approach permit from the Valley County Road Department. Shall obtain building permit for the structure. No outside storage allowed. No parking allowed in the public road right of way or in the setback area. The site must be kept in a neat and orderly manner. All lights should be fully shielded so there's not upward or horizontal projection of lights. The minimum building setback shall be 30 feet from the front, rear, and street property lines, 10 feet from the side, and 100 feet from the floodplain. Landscaping should be installed prior to October 1st of 2023. If the landscaping dies, it must be replaced. A minimum of one tree should be planted for every 25 feet of linear street frontage. This can include existing trees on the site. The trees may be grouped or planted in groves. All noxious weeds on the property must be controlled. Shall obtain a sign permit prior to installation of a sign. Shall have Valley County Engineer approval of the site grading and stormwater management plan prior to any dirt work on site. PMP should be used during construction to retain water away from the creek. Snow must be stored on site. Berms should be elevated above new grade and not have a slope greater than three to one. A new conditional use permit would be needed for public storage and or for commercial office or rental location at this <coughs> site. And then they should discuss a road development agreement with the Board of County Commissioners. And that ends my staff report. Okay, are there any questions for staff? Yeah, send on the floodplain issue. Which one do you have highlighted on the screen? Is that the That's the wetlands. Year, is that the wetland or is that the 100 year flood? Here's the floodplain. Okay. It is. That's what they map, Ken. You see the, that is the flood the insurance rate map, mapped by FEMA. And that's what we enforce too. I know what it's going to look like in two weeks. Right, but when I when we're talking um, regulated floodplain, so we go back to the wetland. Okay, that might be actually. Yeah, that's probably the one. Overlay both of them. Okay, we'll move forward with the presentation by the applicant. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Jonathan Frost. I live at 246 Leeway in Donnelly. Uh, good evening, commissioners and others. Uh, uh, just briefly, uh, we've owned this property since 2020 and um, uh, did not have plans initially to do any development on it. We run cattle on it now. Actually, Rancher from Treasure Valley runs cattle on it right now and will continue to. We don't have any plans to change that. Um, but he maintains the fence. 
uh, and um, uh, runs it on both parcels across Willow Creek as well, both sides. That's owned by Chad Jewell. And uh, we'll just continue to keep that. There's no plans as far as I'm aware to develop anywhere else around there. One thing I did want to correct is it said four to five trips a day uh, more in the winter. And I think that meant to say up to four or five trips in the winter would be more appropriate. I don't think most storage facilities get four to five trips a day once they're developed. So uh, like large commercial storage facilities. So um, we just need somewhere right now to put uh, the equipment that we have that's laying all over Valley County, put it in uh, most of it's snow removal equipment, dump trucks, excavation equipment, uh, things for uh, property development and property management on a more of a construction scale. And right now everything's just sitting outside in different places. I would be embarrassed to tell you some of the equipment we own because I'm sure you've seen it laying around Valley County and I don't want to tell you where it is because it's a blight right now and I'd like to have it all under just one one roof. I'm not sure what else you guys would like to know, but I'm happy to take any questions. What type of structure are you planning on building and what's the height? Excellent question. So uh, the height would vary from 30 feet to 20 feet uh, and it will be facing east to west. The highest point would be facing north. The lowest would slope down the same direction as the lot towards the south. Uh, your other question? I'm sorry. Will it be open to the north? Uh, no, no, it would be fully enclosed, the entire structure. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, thank you. We'll move forward with thank public you. testimony, or is there anyone in favor that would like to testify? Any uncommitted? Any opponents? Okay. Is there anything that the applicant would like to add? No? Nope. Uh, I would like to move the stop. Oh, yes. Please, so, please come up and state your name and address. This is for Marta record. Frost, um, and it's 246 Leeway in Donnelly. And my husband has a lot of um, equipment and four wheelers and snowmobiles and it's all around our backyard and front yard. I would love to have it off my property into an enclosed space. I hope you will approve of this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if there's nothing else, we will close the public hearing for deliberations by the commission. Mr. Childs, do you want to kick it off again? Um, I had a couple thoughts. I struggled a little bit on compatibility, but I still ended up with a positive number. Um, but my, my big concerns, this was really it. My big concerns is those first three um, I can't I, hear you. I'm Sasha. sorry. The first three items on the compatibility matrix are all, well, I guess the bottom is not a negative number. It's a zero, um, but two negative numbers. And so that was my biggest concern with this is even though we have some positive numbers down below our first, those first three kind of vital questions are um, negative or neutral numbers. And so that was kind of a question for me. And then I know there are some, uh, commercial uses in the vicinity, but the primary, you know, the primary use right there is agricultural and single family residential. Um, so I was just struggling with the compatibility of this in that location. Ordinance wise though, I think they've, they've met this other than the compatibility piece. <clears throat> Madam Chairman, I uh, uh, waste one of my concerns with the compatibility. It's, I actually have a negative two, negative one, also a negative one on the last one as well, because I don't see how you get to a zero rating, I think it was, on that if you have 
two previous ones both being negative. And it talks about the one to three mile radius. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, one of them is a negative 10, the other one's a negative 5. Our comprehensive, comprehensive plan is very clear that we're supposed to be working towards maintaining the rural atmosphere of Valley County. At the same time, we have to balance needs uh, in the county. I don't know that building a building 10,000 square foot building out in the middle of pasture land is a compatible use because up the, up the road we're, we talked about the other sites in the Roseberry area that's a that's actually an old home or a town site we used to have a thousand people live there uh, that probably makes sense to cluster those buildings in, in near a city or a commercial oriented facility and that's what you see on the screen so i have I have some difficulty with the compatibility rating of it being placed where it is in the middle i think it's in direct conflict of our plan about gaining the rural atmosphere and agricultural aspects of it and how far is it from this property to the closest commercial business? Mm. Half a mile. Mm. It's a half a mile from the mm. south on Point two three miles. Mm -hmm. okay. Cool. Where to where? From Totoricas. Property line. Mm -hmm. On the edge of the south edge. Oh, you want to go to the south edge? Wow. Point two seven. I um I agree with the negative compatibility. Um but I think there's some precedents set that maybe um this compa this compatibility might be a little over negative. Um, I agree that we're supposed to be maintaining the rural land, but we also have to protect private property rights and we can't tell some, I don't feel like we can tell someone that they can't do something with their property just because we would like it to stay ag ground. Um, I think this would be different than a commercial business that would have lots of customers coming in and out every day. Um, I think the impact to the neighbors and everything's going to be fairly minimal. <clears throat> based off the applicant's presentation. Um, and there's other commercial storage sheds along farm to market. Some that we've approved. I have a one quick question. Did we, do you remember the ones that we approved? Because I do remember. Thrills, you just approved. And were there residential homes there? Was no. that considered an... A uh, home base. Okay, it wasn't. It was just commercial. They want to build their home there at some point, but it. Right we approved now it without commercial. it. Okay, thank you. It's right up. Was it approved for or application made for agricultural uses? No, well, it's to store all their business equipment. equipment. Mm -hmm. You weren't here that night. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one was it? Was it home based or was it? Right here. Truly just commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, the Icola. That's the one that's the, oh, that's the Okay, that's and then the, oh, that's Sheeps. Okay, thank cheap you. Thrills. Yeah, thank you. And then Post, one down here on Barker. This one here. That's quite a ways from this property, though, correct? Uh, yeah. That's the post one. And it's... Oh, gosh. That's within three miles, I think. Am 
while she's doing that. I do think it's here to here. Possibly the wetlands could be a, a concern, and it says that they'll have to go through the U.S. Corps of Engineers and um, see if some if some of those per permits are going to be necessary. Yeah, they're going to have to have something across here. Right. Is it this in an irrigation district? Yes. And the irrigation didn't have anything to say about it? Nope. What do you say, Ken? I don't think they My question is because they have, they, an they have an irrigation ditch that runs right through it. One of them's a drainage ditch, and then there's the library ditch to the south. In the north. This is a, a creek here. That's, that's the drainage. Yeah, but there's, I see on their site plan that there's an irrigation ditch. Yeah. Does it run to other properties? On the south does. Mm -hmm. they, they only own this north section here. They don't own this section down here. Who who owns the section to the south? Cad. Yeah. Oh. And Holly Jewel. Well, um, as as difficult I feel like as that compatibility is, and as much as that bothers me, especially the first three questions, I do feel like this meets our ordinance close enough, especially since there are the area businesses within the three miles. Um, and I think that that. Um, as much as I want to be able to always be in line with the comprehensive plan, I think it's almost impossible per application. So uh, with that in mind, Madam Chairman, I would move that we approve CUP 23-09 Frost Management and Storage. I will go ahead and second that. There's motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Oh. The one thing, and I know it says it in here about landscaping. They they do have to a berm, a berm, but it says in our codes that you have to have that your site plan should include you, all of your landscaping, and I didn't see any of that. Is that something? It does have to put in one tree per twenty five feet or linear lineal frontage, and they said that they were going to do a berm. out front along farmed market to distract from the, the building. The building is gonna to appear to be an ag building. It's not gonna be one of the sprung structures. Um, it's going to be a stick built building with barn doors on the front and things like that. So it, it will look ag, old ag, not new ag. And then, then do you even want a berm? That's up to you. I mean, if you guys don't wanna see a berm out there that well, highlights that that's part There's of our a ordinance. Spot in the middle of the. The ordinance requires the berm, or not? I'm sorry, not the berm. The um, tree every 25 feet. Well, it's not every 25 feet. It's a tree for every enough. 25 right. feet. Exactly. If you want to take yeah. those trees and put them back by the building, you could do something like that. Can Can we make that a condition of approval that it has yeah. to look like an ag building? Yeah, you could do that. I think in, in lieu of requiring heavy landscaping out in the middle of a field. Yeah. But Ken, I can't hear you. I said I don't think a berm's. Look yeah, you're not going to be able to screen this. I mean, right. you're going to no. drive down farm to market and see a blob of trees so randomly. If uh, Commissioner Childs would be um, amenable, I would recommend no berm, and a condition of approval be added that this needs to have a agricultural flair to it. I would be happy to amend the motion for that. They're agreeing. Okay, there's motion second on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 All of those opposed? Aye. Okay, motion carries. There is a 10 day appeal period in which anyone can appeal the decision of the commission to the Board of County Commissioners in accordance with Title 9 5H 12 of the Valley County Code. Thank, thank you for coming and staying so late tonight. We apologize for the late hour. Okay.
It's still early. It's, it's it still is still early. early. <laughs> okay, we will ramped up for twelve. <laughs> on to other. Um, this is an appeal of the administrative decision that a CUP is required for solar panels at one thirty six forty three Morris Ranch Road. It's an action item. We'll go ahead and hear the staff report. here. Um, the property owners oh, Cynthia no. Haney and Peter Miller and their <coughs> property is addressed at 13643 Morris Ranch Road. They have Which is a, where? Could you, where? Whereabouts are we? In the county? Oh, I'm sorry. No. Morris Ranch Road. It's off of Farmed Market across from Willie Lane. Oh, okay. Got it. Oh. Um, we just approved solar panels over here. Oh, yeah. um, this is an appeal of an administrative decision that they need a conditional use permit. Valley County Code 9-5G-1 states that conditional use permits required for solar panels greater than eight square feet are detached from the primary structure. This requirement has been in effect since 2010. Staff determined that detached solar panels have been erected at 13643 Morris Ranch Road without approval of a conditional use permit. The solar panel is visible from Morris Ranch Road and from the Valley County GIS imagery map. Valley County Assessor's Report includes a picture of the solar panels that's attached. In 2001, Building Permit 2165 was obtained for a new garage with a studio apartment. In 2006, Building Permit 2006-607 was obtained to convert the existing garage into living space. According to the State of Idaho Division of Building Safety Permit Information website, an electrical permit for solar collectors grid tied was applied for on October 14th of 2013 and final December 20th of 2013. The current property owner has appealed this administrative decision stating the home was purchased in 2020 with the existing solar panels in place. The onus would have been on the county and the homeowner at the time of installation to see that the permit was acquired, not after the fact. Findings, solar panels were observed at 13643 Morris Ranch Road by staff driving on Morris Ranch Road. Based on information from building and electrical permits, it was determined that the solar panels were installed without a conditional use permit as required by the Valley County Code. Jody Green, Valley County Code Compliance, sent a letter to the property owner stating that a conditional use permit is required for the existing solar panels. Uh, Cynthia Haney replied with an appeal. Um, I accepted the appeal, and Ms. Haney was sent a letter and a draft agenda telling her about what we were doing this evening. Um, I listed the code here for your review. Staff comments. Is the use grandfathered ordinance was in place when installed according to the electrical permit? The commission and the board of county commissioners have recently upheld an administrative decision that conditional use permit is required for previously installed solar panels without a conditional use permit. And that was at 505 Collier View Road. Um, how can Ms. Haney correct this matter? Is a conditional use permit required? Those Staff's opinion is she needs the conditional use permit or she can remove the solar panels. So, um, Cinda, what seems obviously different about this one to me, and, and tell me if I'm wrong about the other ones that we required a CUP for, was that she purchased this property that was already that already had solar panels on it and she was unaware that there was a CUP. And I guess as a commission, we have to decide, does that matter? Yeah, I think one of them that we had. It was a different owner? Because I thought they were all the original owners that had put in the solar panels themselves. On point, was it that way? No, he put those in himself. Oh, he put those in? Yeah. Before. Mm -hmm. it was, one of Lake Fork was too big. You've required permits for any that were put in after the date of, after adoption of the ordinance. Well, and, well, this is probably deliberation, so I better wait. Right. She can present her case if, yep. if you want. 
Okay, we will hear from the appellant now. Please uh, state your name and address for the record. Cynthia Heine, 13643 Morris Ranch Road. McCall, um, when I purchased this property, the solar panels were in existence. I am relatively new to Valley County. I'm not aware of a conditional use permit at all. Um, I, ignorance is no excuse. However, um, again, the former homeowner put the solar panels in, um, applied for other permits, and it was after the 2010 um, ordinance, so I don't understand why they weren't required to have a conditional use permit at that point in time. Um, my husband's retired, I'm trying to retire, and it seems like every time I turn around, there's some other fee, tax, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm, you know, the solar panels are over 10 years old at this point in time. They don't generate that much electricity. Um, my electric bills are $300 plus during the winter months. And um, to me, the whole idea behind when the solar panels were installed was to try to combat high electric bills. Um, if I have to pay $300 conditional use permit on top of trying to pay my electric bill. It's just not worth it to me. So I will probably take the solar panels down. So, thank you. Were there any questions for her? Okay. I guess now we can discuss it. How many square feet are they, Sunday? That's it. No. How, do you know how big they are? There's a pergola um, just outside of the house, and the panels are on top of the pergola. They don't cover. There are four separate panels. Doesn't cover the whole roof of it. There's open space there, so um, I, I don't specifically know how many square feet they're on. Again, they've been there for years. I no one has ever complained. They're you know in the time that we've been there, there's no flare from them. The neighbors are quite far away from us. Cinda, is a pergola not considered a structure? It's not the primary structure. Oh, it has to be primary. Okay. It has to be primary. Which would be the house or the garage? Mm -hmm. We do pay property tax on it, so it's not considered a structure. So it looks like it's about 14 by 20. It's 15 by 20. 14. It's about 14 by 20. It's greater than 8 square feet. I can see where you are coming from with the fact that you bought it. But I also see that the point of a CUP is to mitigate impacts mm -hmm. on neighbors and no one's ever had the chance. Maybe these do glare at someone. Is there that. a way that we could require the CUP without requiring the $300 fee? Out of the generous, generosity of your own purse? No, out of just knowing that this is... We didn't have a compliance officer, and now we do. Properties have changed hands without, you know, this being coming to their awareness. So is, do we feel like there is something that should be offered to those that purchased without knowing that there was a CUP required that wasn't obtained? So you want to process a conditional use permit without any fee to cover costs? Like no, I don't want to, mailings. but I do want to be realistic. I mean, there are a number of them out there. Now that we do have code compliance, mm -hmm. she will be finding more. So if we're going to waive fees for anybody that mm -hmm. violates and then we catch them. So it, I guess if that's the case, my reaction to this as the person that did, as the applicant did not install those would be to not require this.
That would be don't nice. enforce the ordinance. I, unless the person that owns the property is the person that installed the solar panels. I'm going to take a little different spin on this thing because I don't know if we have all the information we need. I, I hear what you're saying. And I hear what the applicant's saying. And then we don't have to decide this thing. It might be worthy of a discussion. With legal counsel. Put this, put this on hold for a while and see if it's something that we want to address. Address Ken, I can't hear you either. I must be Sorry. getting really old. <laughs> you guys sit up there and whisper. Sorry, each other. we're not whispering. So, I don't whisper. My, I don't. my point is, um, I don't know that we have all the information, and I guess from from my perspective, my point is, I don't think we need to decide this tonight. Um, and especially if there are a number of these other type of app, these issues coming forward, if we could get a sense of what the landscape looks like, how, how many there are, are they on sheds, are they freestanding? I mean, is there 500 of them in the county? Is there 20? Is there, I, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we got, if we had some sense of that, then we might want to look at our ordinance and say, you know, there might be room for some granting of a previously constructed uh, yeah. structure. I agree. I think that might be the prudent thing to do is to just wait for a little while and have um, Cinda and her team put together maybe some information about quantities um, that are maybe out there? <clears throat> I don't know how many are out there, Ken. Just just to be honest, if I knew about them, I would require a conditional use permit. That seems like a big ask of an already very, very busy staff. But I know, but didn't you say that there are a number of them coming? No. Oh, where no, they may be. Yeah. Yeah. People Sorry. that are in violation of the ordinance. I misunderstood that. We just that. grandfather those in? Well... I mean, if you have a hundred... I mean, I've got one coming next week on a different issue. But but there's been a couple of these that we've rejected on good ground, on good solid grounds. They're huge. They obstruct the view of another house. We're, we're getting into debate here that's probably not pertinent to this application, but I think we need to have some more discussion. I think deciding something on this one tonight might not be the appropriate thing to do. So you want number of solar panels in the county? Well, I mean, if the assessor has some ability to grab that information, that'd be great. They don't value them. They're not. Or maybe we yeah. should have some discussion within the commission of on what conditions would we grant some sort of a grandfathering mm -hmm. versus where we would not. Right. If it didn't meet a, the current ordinance right. or some other criteria that I'm not. I, and I get that, but ordinances are black and white. We have to follow them. That's why they're there. In buying a house, you have to make sure the septic's correct, or otherwise you're going to be responsible for... Fire beware. Hmm? Fire beware. Right. So I guess I see it a little more black and white, that this is our, these are our ordinances, and it is to prevent any impacts to neighbors. That's what the public hearing is about. That's that's the yeah the right, raising the CUP process. Mm -hmm. Well, um, if if in a stay or continuation, I I will ask. Would you please? Sorry, please come up to the microphone so it's on the record. As Commissioner Roberts said said he was contemplating maybe um, not deciding this evening would be in everyone's best interest. So um, if that's the case, I 
will ask some of my neighbors to come and speak for me that um, they don't feel that those panels are impacting them. I don't believe we're allowed to do that without having an actual public hearing, which we would have to have a CUP for. I, so we would have to have the application to take any public testimony. Okay. So that's a, a, a conflict of, of where I'm trying to go, so, okay. And, and we understand this is frustrating. We're just trying to be consistent with the applications that we have received and are going to receive. Mm -hmm. But I am fine if we would like to postpone this decision until next week. Thanks. May is already. Yeah, tomorrow. I'm not thinking May. <laughs> June. I'm, think, I'm thinking July or August. And the reasons is for us to have some discussions at one of our work sessions, see if there's something we want to change. <clears throat> our work sessions are already quite packed. And if we're, I'm just so, so trying to keep it, you know, know. to keep our yeah. time as this reasonable as well as staff. And I know summer, June, um, Cinda had already said she just keeps getting application after application. So I'm fine postponing it. I just don't want to do it indefinitely and add. So are you trying to look for a discussion to not require CUPs for solar panels? Well, I mean, that, that's a whole change in our ordinance. It, it, there, there might be a change in our ordinance. Uh, and I think it may be is precipitated based on some of the applications or some of the, the appeals to the administrative decisions that we've seen on these. Now, there's some that we've we've said, yeah, you need to have an application. Um, the, I'm, the, what's catching my mind is that this is on top of an existing structure. It's just not the primary residence or the garage. Mm -hmm. And that's it's something we might want to consider. I don't want to get into the detail of it at this okay. meeting. Yeah, because there's a reason that it was the primary structure. Then we should probably discuss that so that we have a clear understanding as to why that is the way it is. And I don't think it's fair to have the applicant sit here while we have that discussion. So. Mm -hmm. I, and I would suggest we table it. I know next meeting is slammed. And it and, sounds like June's going to be very... May is as well, right? May is horrible. So what, what well, about We June? don't have as many at, at the next one because Garnet withdrew theirs, but... Oh, right. Um, it, it'll be a long meeting. So maybe if we could discuss it sometime at the discretion of when the staff has time over the course of the next... <clears throat> you need how, about do, you need how about we do that? How about we do this? Um, I would move that we table the administrative appeal decision on the conditional use permit for the required solar panel at 13643 Morris Ranch Road at the discretion of the chair. But then we'll have to notice. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She can put it on the agenda, whatever you want. I'll second that. There's a motion and then second <clears throat> and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? I'm going to vote no. Sorry again for the late hour and for having to table or postpone this, but we do appreciate you coming in tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to facts and conclusions. entertain a motion I move that we I'm sorry oh go ahead. I was just looking for the list sorry um that we approve the facts and conclusions for VAC 23-01 CUP 23-01 23-02 23-03 23-04 23-05 23 and 23-07 Okay, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. If we adjourn. Yep. Adjourn this meeting at oh, 938. Yeah.
launch it at 12 to 9 and say it in military time. <laughs> Just that. 